Okay, Hank, and taking a look at the weather, it is 36 degrees. You can see the winds, and they could be a factor as they usually are here at Rich Stadium, and wet snow is the forecast. We had rain in the morning. We had some light snow. We don't have much precipitation right now as Raphael Septien gets set to kick off. Van Williams and Don Wilson will be receiving, and there is Don Wilson. Number 21, Van Williams has been the leader, and Wilson, a yard in the end zone, brings it out for Buffalo. And he's hit inside the 15-yard line by Vince Albritton, and we're underway. The offense for the Buffalo Bills, veteran Joe Ferguson, who's had to struggle this year. Big Bell, rookie of Tony Hunter looked awfully good at tight end. Jones, Vogler, Grant, Borchardt, and Devlin, the offensive line. And Tim Vogler is starting at left guard for Jim Richard, who normally is in that spot. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. Here's Greg Bell. He breaks a couple of tackles. Greg Bell may go all the way. Greg Bell. Touchdown, Buffalo. Start. Can you believe that? And of course, you know, talking to Greg Bell yesterday, he lit up like a Christmas tree when I talked about the running game. He said, well, I'd like to carry the ball 25 times in the game. I think we can run well against the Dallas Cowboys. And they started off like gangbusters. Number one draft pick from Notre Dame. Fifth in the conference in rushing. 646 yards. And the Bills lead it six to nothing. And Chuck Nelson, who was signed a couple of weeks ago when Joe Danello was waived. There's Bell, who scored the touchdown. Will try to give the Bills a 7-0 lead. Holding is Matt Coulter. They are buzzing here at Orchard Park. 21 seconds into the ball game. The Bills score on the first play. And the kick is good. It's 7 to nothing, Buffalo. Here's, here's the shot from the I formation. And there's a penalty flag down, Hank, first. There's a penalty flag on the kick. The referee is Bob McElwee, and he'll tell us. Holding on the 55 offense. So a holding penalty. Called against Buffalo, Tim Vogler, and so they're going to move back five yards and try it again. What an explosion on that first play. Wasn't that something? Greg Bell will always remember an 85-yard touchdown run against the Dallas Cowboys, no matter what happens the rest of his career. And he was excited about playing against the Dallas Cowboys yesterday when we talked about it. He proved it. This is going to be a 30-yard extra point. Vogler holding. And this kick is good. It is seven to nothing. And once again, Hank, Greg Bell's tremendous run. They're in the I formation. Watch the block on on White. Bell cuts back over the inside. Lockhart, the middle linebacker, overran the play, went right up the middle. And that's something I think we can see a lot of this afternoon. Whether they're going to be successful with it remains to be seen. But I think they went into the game with the idea of throwing, running the ball left. A lot this afternoon. 29 seconds. 21 seconds have gone off. Buffalo leads it 7 to nothing. <laughs> run in history against the Dallas Cowboys. Just been engineered by rookie Greg Bell of Notre Dame. 85 yards. And now Gary Allen is back for the Dallas Cowboys. As Chuck Nelson will kick off. Allen has been the leading kickoff returner. Chuck McSwain is also back there for the Cowboys. Short kick. And it's going to be Allen at the 15. Tripped up. Just about the 30-yard line by Martin Bayless. And a penalty marker is down on the field. 
Dallas Cowboys coming in with a record of 7 and 4, tied with the Redskins for first in the NFC East and the Bills 0 and 11. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness on the 55 on the return Steve Diossi, the rookie from Boston College, the guilty party will mark that off on a post-possession penalty as you look at the Dallas Cowboys offense. Gary Hogaboom getting the start again. Tony Dorsett and Ron Springs in the backfield. Tony Hill and Mike Renfro, the wide receivers. Doug Cosby is the tight end. Herb Scott, usually the tackle, filling in. A guard filling in a tackle for Howard Richards is out. Titans are Rafferty, Peterson, and Paz Derek, the rest of the offensive line. The ball is at the 15-yard line, first and 10. In motion is Ron Spring. Green pass to Tony Hill. Tony Hill tried to carry Brian Carpenter and did for a couple of yards and brings it out to the 21. Brian Carpenter, one of four left cornerbacks used this year by the Bills. They have Ben Williams, Fred Smurlis, the veteran, and Ken Johnson up front. Keating, Hazlitt, Eugene Marvin, and Darrell Talley are the linebackers. Carpenter, who made that tackle with Charles Romes at right cornerback, veteran Steve Freeman, and Don Wilson, the safety. I think we'll see the Cowboys trying to use a lot of draws and screens, especially early in the game, uh, Dick, because they use a lot of zone defense. I'm talking about the Buffalo Bills. Second down and four. Timmy Newsom is in for Ron Springs. Cosby in motion. And here's Newsom. Stop shy of the 25-yard line. It'll be third and about two. Jim Hazlitt, one of the inside linebackers, makes the tackle. So it'll be third down and short for the Dallas Cowboys. There's Hazlitt, who's recovered from a back problem, limited his play to only 11 games the last two years, and one of the big veterans on this team. Yeah, they like him very much, and I think he's considered to be, when he's healthy, one of the very outstanding linebackers in the National Football League. Thank you. He's been uh, up and down in his career, up when the Bills were a playoff team and down with their own 11. He's lived through both. Third down and a long one. Mike Renfro now moves. Hogaboom has time up the middle, caught first down. Renfro to the 30 yard line. That's the point of sermon. Eugene Marv and Jim Hazlitt making the tackle on Mike Renfro. Mike Renfro that time came across the formation, ran kind of a delayed pattern, then came right across the middle. A very outstanding possession kind of a player. Catches the ball very, very well. Makes sure he catches it. Gets the most out of the play he possibly can. The only thing that was important was getting the first down. And that was his first reception in the last three games. Dorsett the single back. The ball's at the 30-yard line. Play action for Hogaboom up the middle of Dorsett to the 36-yard line, picking up about six yards. Eugene Marr making the tackle on Tony Dorsett, who comes into the game, needing 140 yards rushing for another 1,000-yard season. It's been a tough couple of weeks, Hank, for Tony Dorsett with the death of his father, Wes Dorsett, in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, going back and forth and still playing in the games and still doing a pretty good job. Well, he's that kind of a player. You know, that's, you talk about mental toughness. Somehow, some way, you have to get, get it done, and he's made that public, and that's exactly what he's trying to do. Second down and four. Play action again, hold the boom. Completes the pass to Tony Hill and a first down at the 46-yard line. Jim Hazlitt making the tackle. Gain of 11. Watch Hazlitt, number 55. 11 yards. Watch Tony Hill. Breaks underneath the linebacker, right in front of the linebacker. Makes the catch. The ball is thrown perfectly. That kind of a ball, when you throw it inside, must be thrown at the numbers. It was, and they have another first down. He's caught, uh, he's caught a pass in 40 straight games that he has been. Of course, he was out five games, and that's the longest streak on the club. Here is Dorsett going off the left side, past midfield into Buffalo territory at the 48-yard line. Stop by Keating. Haslett and Fred Spurless combined to make the tackle on Tony Dorsett. Buffalo defense, as you can see, has been a porous defense. Five yard gain. They have put the offense in the hole a lot this year by trailing early. But for a change, the Buffalo Bills 
jumped off top, top early. Yes, and Don Lawrence, their defensive coordinator, indicated they didn't want to do many things differently this time. They just wanted to play fundamentally sound and tough. Second down and five at the Bills 48. Newsom. Fumble. The Bills may have it. Buffalo recovers at the 45. Fred Smurlis picked up the loose ball. So the veteran, still one of the very best, those tackles. Fred Smurlis, four times a Pro Bowl performer, recovers the Dallas fumble. Mike Smurlis now, number 76. He's on the nose of the center. He comes over to the side. The ball pops loose. And there he is making the recovery, number 76. Marvin Hazlitt made the hit. Smurlis was Johnny on the spot. Buffalo, good field position. They have the ball again. Well, the Buffalo Bills with nothing to lose. A victory over Dallas can make their year, but it's a long way to go. Yet it's first and 10 at their own 45. Let's see if they run left again. That's what their plan is, to run left. Start Here's left. Booker Moore upended at the line of scrimmage. Okay. Anthony Dickerson making the tackle. The Dallas Cowboys Stop defense has been a solid part of the ball team. They have allowed only three touchdowns in the last 14 quarters coming into today's game. Jones, Dutton, White, and Jeffcoat up front. The linebackers, Eugene Lockhart in place of Bob Rudick, who has the back injury. And the secondary, Walls, Fellows, Flink, Scale, and Downs. And of course, you know they bring in those seven backs that Hank mentioned. Second and ten. Joe Ferguson. His first pass is batted down by Ed Tall jones who's made a career out of doing that, Hank. Booker Moore, the intended receiver. Yeah, that was an option pass. They tried to throw the ball downfield uh, to the receiver. Had he been open, why they'd have thrown the ball to him, but uh, he wasn't open, so they tried to dump the ball off into the flat, and Tall jones slaps it right down. Tom Landry. That's one of those boomerang shots. <laughs> the tenth time that... Ed Jones has batted down a pass at the line this year. Third down and 10 at the 45 for Ferguson. Ferguson completes the pass. Mitchell Brookins, a rookie from Illinois in the fourth round, gives the Bills a first down and 11 yard pickup from the old veteran Ferguson. He throws the ball with good anticipation, thrown to the outside, tackled by Victor Scott. It's man-for-man -man coverage, and he had plenty of time to throw the ball. That was the key, good protection. Linemen do a good job of picking up the rushers, and he's able to stuff it into the pocket and throw the ball outside for a first down. At the Cowboys 44, Greg Bell is the lone setback. 7-0, Buffalo leading, play action. Ferguson. He's looking for Preston Denard, but throws it out of bounds, and he was covered well by Ron Fellow. That time he had a great opportunity to take off and run. He decided to throw the ball that time, Dick, but he had all the room in the world because the linebacker, number 51, Dickerson, dropped off and was concerned about coverage, and for that reason, he had all the room in the world, but of course, I should qualify that by saying, I guess, he's got a bad ankle, and I probably think he's a little reluctant to run him unless he really has to. Yeah, he lost a lot of mobility. He had a sprained ankle and missed two games and just hasn't been the same since he's been back. Second down and 10 at the 44-yard line. 9.22 showing on the clock. First quarter, the Bills lead 7-0. And here's Bell. His second carry. And the Cowboys are there. Dickerson makes the stop on Greg Bell, who is the most productive rookie in the National Football League Lockhart offensively. Hammond. And defensively, Gene Lockhart is playing the middle linebacker position, number 56, and they say that he instills a lot of toughness to game. the defense, and they like that very, very much. He's an exciting player. There are several of those people. There's a lot of firepower on the Cowboys' defense this year. In motion goes Julius Dawkins. Third down and nine for Ferguson. It's batted down, nearly intercepted by Dennis Thurman. Dexter Klinkscale got a piece of it. It'll be incomplete fourth down. And one of the top rookies in the NFL, John Kidd, a rookie from Northwestern, will come in to punt. And that's the one thing that uh, we mentioned at the top of the show. The Buffalo Bills 
want to make sure that they keep the seven backs off the field as much as they possibly can. That time, Plinksdale blitzed and got a piece of the ball, but that's the kind of problems they create with a seven defensive back. Gary Allen is back. You saw Kidd, his longest kick, 63 yards against the New England Patriots last week. Trying to get it inside the 20-yard line. Allen calls for a fair catch at the 13. Tom Landry has gone through a tough year, but the Dallas Cowboys come in 7-4. Not a bad spot for a tough team. Hank Stram at Rich Stadium in Orchard Park, New York. On a cold Sunday, temperatures in the mid-30s. 8.31 to go in the first quarter. Cowboys first and 10 on their own 14. Dorsett looking for room. And it closes up in a hurry, a pickup of two yards. And you can see how aroused the Buffalo defense is. Ken Johnson, but Eugene Marv, who had 18 tackles last week against New England. He's just about in every play. And that was a counter play with the idea of making the linebackers react one way and then go on the other. Dorsett takes a step to his right to give his right guard and right tackle a chance to pull. At that time, they stuffed the play and reacted very, very well to what they saw. The Bills failing to capitalize on the fumble recovery. Now Dallas trying to get back in it. Ogaboom going up the middle again. Cosby loses the ball incomplete. It's ruled. Cosby, the intended receiver, had it and lost it. Steve Freeman defending Chris Keating back there as well. Cosby comes off the ball on the left side. There you see him. Makes the catch in, 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 in the process of trying to get upfield. He really doesn't have a handle on the ball. And as he's hit, he's not, the ball is knocked loose and falls incomplete. Keating, number 52, was right there to make a play. Rodney Bellinger and Rod Cush are extra defensive backs. The dime defense for Buffalo. Third down and eight at the 15-yard line. Gary Hogaboom. With springs in motion. Under pressure, and back inside the five. That was Ben Williams. And Hank, he's been bothered by a sore shoulder. They didn't bother him on that last play. Ben Williams gets a good takeoff from the line of scrimmage. Ben Williams with the sack. He tries to get out of the reach of Ben Williams, number 77, but he comes right up the middle and makes the sack. So Danny White... Now the only punter left on the club, John Warren, was released this week. Will be kicking to Don Wilson, a rookie free agent who has been spectacular. Wilson is fifth in the AFC, including a 64-yard touchdown. And he'll be at his Dallas 40-yard line. So the Bills should get another good opportunity here, Hank. The important thing, they do something with the opportunity. They did it the last time, and they better this time. Wilson runs the ball at the 40. Oh, he's got a And Don Wilson is at the 30-yard line and out of bounds at the 22-yard line. An 18-yard return. Vince Albright makes the stop, and the Buffalo Bills are knocking on the Dallas Cowboys' door once again. Here's the replay on the scoreboard. Watch it. Here it comes. Number 21, he starts to his right, Wilson, then goes back to the left. The containment man, the reason that happened, the he containment man who was supposed to worry about the outside got caught inside, and for that reason, he was able to jump to the outside and make a big play of 18 yards. So the Bills have a first and 10 on the Cowboy 21 with 721 remaining. Greg Bell moves the pile. And Bell carries it to the 16-yard line, a gain of about seven on the play. Okay. Randy White makes the tackle for the Take Dallas the Cowboys. I think the Buffalo Bills really have to be patient. They must stick the ball at the Cowboys, run right at the, right at the defense. That's what I think they'll be able to do best, and that's what they've been able to do pretty good so far in this game. Not to be impatient, just run the ball at it. It is snowing now, not heavily, but enough of a sprinkle. Second down and five. Here's Bell again, has a first down inside the 10-yard line. 
And right now, Hank Stram, the Dallas Cowboys must be saying, who is this Greg Bell? Well, they're also asking, who is Ken Jones and, and Vogler, the left guard and the left tackle? Look at the blocks they get. And also, the linebacker was blocked also, Dickerson. That's where they want to do business, and they're doing a good job of setting up shots so far. So the Bills in command at this point. First and goal at the seven, leading seven to nothing. Greg Bell, 85-yard touchdown run on the first play of the ball game. Seven to nothing to score. Bell is within one yard of going over 100 already. And here's Bell. And he's thrown for a loss back to the 12. And it was Mike Hegman. What a solid year he has had. Veteran Mike Hegman makes the stop, a loss on the play. There was a great illustration of why I mentioned they should run left. They'll do a lot better running to their left than they will to the right. And usually, you know, people are very concerned about running at Randy White, and he's a great, great defensive tackle, but I think basically you're a lot better to run at those great people than they are to run away from because they have such great uh, recovery speed. And there was a good shot of two tall Jones and Hegman on the play. Of course, the Cowboys had not allowed a rushing touchdown until Bell... And the opening play, 85 yards. The second and goal at the 11th. Booker Moore is in the game. Bell is out. Here's Ferguson rolling out, looking, throwing, incomplete. Byron Franklin was his intended receiver. And covering on the play was Everson Wall. Joe Ferguson, a savvy veteran who's had to play in Buffalo, has had his big moments here. But uh, coming off the worst passing game of the season, against the New England Patriots. Nine for 29 with two interceptions and less than 150 yards. That's what he is today, one for five, as the Bills have done it mostly on the ground so far. And talking to Joe yesterday, he said, boy, the beauty would be great if we can run the ball, which we think we can, but he takes a lot of pressure off of our passing game. Cowboys have their 4-0 defense in there, third and goal at the 11th. Up the middle, Ferguson, penalty marker down. Preston Denard makes the reception at the six-yard line, but flags fly. Fellows made the stop on Preston Denard. And holding against the Buffalo Bills, and that has nagged them all year long. Henry. Yeah, that's really been a, a, a tough situation for them. I think they had 29 holding penalties in, in about five games there. They finally reduced it a little bit last week, but that's really been their problem. Every time they got something going, they get some kind of a holding penalty and it killed the drive. Holding number 40, offense. Still third down. Well, it wasn't the line. It was uh, running back Rob Reddick. And a lot of times when you think about a, a, a sack or holding, you think it's the lineman, but it's Riddick holding the linebacker who was blitzing on the play. 40 Bates going into 40 Riddick. There's Kay Stevenson who's suffering through a winless year after going 8-8 eight and eight last year. Third down and 21. Third and goal at the 21-yard line. Bills moving backward here. Ferguson has time up the middle. Byron Franklin makes the reception. And the Bills are putting their field goal kicker Chuck Nelson into better position. Kofler will do the holding. Dennis Thurman makes the stop. So the Bills will try to add to their lead and make it 10 to nothing. Chuck Nelson is two for four since joining the Bills. He's a former Ram. His longest was 42 yards. I talked to him yesterday, too. He was tickled to death because he said he was waiting for phone calls and he finally came. 35-yard attempt with four minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Bobble snap, Kofler in trouble, but he's a quarterback. Throws it up for grabs, and it is incomplete. Fucking A. Buster Barnett, and Kofler is upset. The snap was either too low or was bobbled by Kofler. And it is still 7-0 in favor of the Buffalo Bills. Let's get a closer look at what happened. Yeah, he skidded on the ground and got between his legs, and he didn't have time enough to recover the ball and still put it down. He did it the only thing he could possibly do in that situation, and that is try to get the ball downfield and maybe make something out of it. 
But Buffalo didn't get anything out of it. That's twice now. They still lead, though. The Buffalo Bills have four tight ends on their roster. One of them is Mark Bramer, and he is the long snapper on kicks. And he was the one that snapped it low on that field goal attempt. So the Bills have failed on two chances now to add to their lead. Yeah, that's one thing. When you're playing a good team like the Dallas Cowboys, you better take advantage of field position and get points when you can because, you know, somewhere along the line, they're going to recover and uh, make it tough on you. Tony Hill in motion, first and 10 of the 17 for the Cowboys. Big screen, and now they go to Dorsett, and he is hit and hit hard by Darrell Talley. Big play by Darrell Talley, who made a reputation as a blitzer and sometimes plays the fourth down lineman spot on passing situations. That's the one thing. I think they fooled him a little bit that time, uh, Dick, when you're playing against a team that uses a lot of zone. Two things you want to do, you want to draw and screen a lot, but if they play man for man, that tightens it up a little bit. They were in man for man that time, and that's why he was able to make the play. We're talking about Cali, number 56. Loss of six yards, second down and 16, back to the 11. Less than three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Here's Dorsett. Slices his way to the 16-yard line. Not quite back to the original line of scrimmage. Don Wilson, the rookie free agent from North Carolina State, makes the tackle on Dorset. It'll be third down, and three minutes remain in the quarter. Five-yard gain. Cowboys are averaging 19 points offensively this year, as opposed to 31 last year. So you can see that most of their problems rest with the offense. The other thing, they haven't been able to rush nearly as well as they have in the past. They've only averaged about 170 yards rushing a game, which is not very good. Hogaboom in the spread. Pressure on Hogaboom. His pass is almost intercepted by Brian Carpenter. In fact, it was in his hand. Do you think the gloves had any effect on him? Don't ask me about gloves. I hate to see guys wearing gloves. <laughs> uh, but I think, uh, I always feel when they drop a ball, that has a bearing on it. You know, when a golfer has to take off his left glove when he putts because of the sensitivity of it, you know there's got to be some truth to that. I often say, if it doesn't make any difference, why didn't the quarterback use gloves, and why didn't, why didn't they try to throw with gloves? Because he, he doesn't have the touch, right? That's right, and it's the same thing with the defensive backs and receivers, everybody. So Danny White is in the punt for the second time, and Don Wilson is just about at midfield and could give the Bills good field position. They have had good field position for the most part. Uh -oh. And nearly blocked, and he got a piece of it. It was deflected, and the Bills are going to get the ball in Dallas territory. Joe Azelby... A rookie from Harvard got a piece of that punt that brought Tom Landry off of the sidelines. It only goes 19 yards. Here it is. Azelby comes right up the middle. Nobody blocked him. Nobody blocked him at all. Azelby came right up there, right through the gap, number 50. It looks like the deep back was responsible for him, should have been, but he wasn't there. And he came right on through to make the play. 18 yards on the kick. So the Bills will have it first and 10 at the Cowboys 35 with 2.27 to go in the first quarter. But Hank Stram, I'd have to think, and you've seen a lot of these games, that even though it's 7-0 Buffalo, they can't let too many more of these opportunities go by the board. No, they can, and they have to remember what their plan was. I think they, they deviate, if you're not careful, from what they think they could do. And I think they still have to run at the Dallas Cowboys and be patient and just stick it at them and make sure they keep those seven defensive backs off the field. Tom Landry over at the sideline talking things over. The offense has sputtered throughout this first quarter for the Cowboys. In other scores, Seattle leading Cincinnati in the first quarter. Atlanta over Cleveland, 7 to nothing. also the first quarter. This might be a good time for a play-action pass. They haven't thrown that yet in pretty good field position. This would be a good spot for that if they're going to do one. Fake and an interception. Pass is intercepted by Eugene Lockhart. And he stepped out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Lockhart was out of bounds at the 40 of Buffalo. But a big play for the Cowboys as they get the ball back once again. And Lockhart's first NFL interception. And what a great play. It was a play-action fake. But not a very good fake at all. It didn't hold the middle linebacker. Lockhart takes an angle right for the receiver. 
got the ball. He was the only guy that was really open on the play, Dick, and he goes right down the sideline with the ball in the wrong arm. Had he had the ball in his right arm, he could have used a straight arm, but he didn't. But you just take a look at death in that situation that he was able to make the interception, which is a great play by Lockhart. And the Cowboys avoid trouble again. Time of the game, the Dallas Cowboys are starting a possession outside their own 20-yard line. Their first three possessions were the 16, 14, and 17, and they are now at the Buffalo 40. That play was a great illustration of faking with the hand rather than a ball. I think it's a lot more effective to fake with the ball than it is the hand because it's a lot more effective. Two receivers to the left, Hogaboom looking right, and his pass is caught by Cosby inside the 30-yard line and a first down for Dallas. Eugene Marr makes the tackle, a 13-yard pickup for the leading receiver on the Dallas Cowboys this year, Doug Cosby. You know, one thing is very obvious, obvious that the Dallas Cowboys are going to be very patient. They're playing against a team that plays the zone, which means they play the areas of the field rather than uh, the player who's running the pattern. For that reason, they're going to throw short patterns until they get the right kind of a situation, but they've been very effective throwing against the zone so far. They have the ball on the 29-yard line of Buffalo with 140 remaining first quarter. 7-0, the Bills lead the Cowboys. Here's a screen pass and a flea flicker, and Renfro is going to go for Tony Hill, and he overthrows him. Rod Push was covering, and there was Dallas's version of some fancy Dan play to try to get back quickly in this game. A little recess football play, any any over, and he was wide open on the play. He just overthrew it, and you know Rod Cush came all the way over from the other side of the field, got a good jump on the ball, and at least he was there to make a play had it been catchable. You notice that Renfro is one of those receivers who is not wearing gloves today. I don't know how many of the Cowboys are. Second down and 10 at the 29. You know, they got that from the baseball players who wear gloves with the bats, and uh, they don't have to catch the bat. Second and 10, Hogaboom. Green up the middle, Dorsett, open room, fights his way inside the 10, another first down. Rod Cush making the tackle for 21 yards, and Hank, you're so right. The Cowboys are awfully patient, and they're picking up some big plays that way, too. Well, we talked about it earlier. They have to throw screens and draws against this zone defense. Now, this time, they throw a middle screen. Look at that middle, wide open. Dorsett does a good job of acting. Look at that. He gets the rush, finally. Makes the catch. It gets a good block by the offensive center that time, Rafferty. And he goes right up the middle. Now, they're in a double zone defense, which means the middle is really wide open, and they call the perfect play against that defense. 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 7-0 Buffalo, but Dallas is threatening. First and goal at the nine. Here's Dorsett. Gets by one tackler and fights his way to the five-yard line. Steve Freeman, the strong safety, makes the tackle. Go take your agent. Run up by Freeman. Clock is running. We may or may not get off another play before the gun. There's a great illustration of uh, stretching a, a loss into a five-yard gain. He should have been tackled near the line of scrimmage or even for a loss, but good running. He got through the traffic and picked up five yards on the play. The Cowboys are going to be content in letting the clock run out, talk things over, and really have enough time to discuss their next play as they try to even this game. That is the end of the first quarter here at Rick Stadium. 79,000 plus. The Bills lead 7-0, but considering what's happened here, they could have had some more. You've always wanted in a beer and less. Honda, makers of the new Accord SEI four-door sedan. And by AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. Along with Hank Stram, this is Dick Stockton here at Orchard Park, New York. The Buffalo Bills lead 7-0. We start the second quarter. Andy likes play-action passes sometimes in this situation. We might look for that here. Let's see what they do. Second and goal at the four. Ron Spring gets a yard, and that's all. Merlis came off the block of the center, Rafferty that time in good shape and got over there and uh, helped make the tackle. Watch Smurlis, number 76 on the center. He gets pushed a little bit into the play, 
that winds up down below the pile and helping make the play on the run on Springs. Brett Cornwell, a rookie from USC, is a second tight end, number 85 for the Cowboys. Third and goal at the three. Cosby goes to the right. Looking as Hogaboom, he fires. It was deflected. Darrell Talley got a piece of that ball. Several targets in the end zone for the Dallas Cowboys. And Raphael Septien will come in to try to give the Cowboys their first points of the game. Tony Hill was the intended receiver. Yeah, Talley really made a sensational play. It looked like Hill was going to make the catch. Looked like he was wide open. And I think that's what Hogaboom thought, too, because he didn't really drill it. He tried to get it into him. By the time he got it there, Darrell Talley, number 56, responded very, very well and knocked the ball down. This will be a 21-yard attempt. Hogaboom will hold. Sefti had missed three field goals last week against St. Louis. First time in, since 1979. Also had one block. Another low snap, but they recover, and the kick is good. So Raphael Septien, who has now scored in 114 straight games. That's the longest among active kickers, and the Buffalo Bills lead is cut to 7-3 to three on Septien's 21-yard field goal. Well, Buffalo dodged a bullet that time by not permitting them, uh, the Dallas Cowboys, to get seven. But again, uh, the, the key thing in the game so far has been, has been the fact that the Buffalo Bills had the ball on the minus. Next Friday, Hank, uh, the Boston College Eagles go against the Miami Hurricanes live 2.30 Eastern. And, of course, Doug Flutie is one of the great attractions in college football. And so is Bernie Kosar, the fine quarterback of Miami. And next Saturday, it'll be the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. What a whopping of Penn State yesterday against USC, 3.30 Eastern. Notre Dame making quite a comeback. Hank. Oh, they really made it. They did a sensational job yesterday, and uh, it looks like Coach Faust has got the team rolling in good, good shape near the end of the season. Wilson is back to receive. Except the end will kick off. Van Williams is also back there for the Buffalo Bills. He has been their chief kick returner, Van Williams. A duel between Flutie and Kosar will be something to watch on Friday. Well, he's fun to watch, isn't he? He's not big, but I know you like him. Oh, he's exciting. He talks about a guy that makes things happen. He does. Van Williams. Inside the five. And then. And brings it out to the 17-yard line. That was a good recovery by Van Williams as the kick bounced around. Scores of other games in the National Football League. Bringing up to date, Seattle still leading Cincinnati. They're now in the second quarter of their game the at Riverfront Stadium. Cleveland over Atlanta, second quarter in Atlanta. The Rams and Green Bay Packers. That's a big game for both teams. Green Bay trying to make a comeback on the year and doing it. The Rams looking for a wild card. They lead. And the Bears over the Lions, 10 to 7, second quarter. First and 10 for the Bills on the 17-yard line. About a minute into the second quarter. Greg Bell hit at the line and goes nowhere. John Dutton makes the tackle. Bell carry. Patriots over the Colts, 16 to nothing. They still have playoff hopes. And look at Washington, zero, Philadelphia, three. Philadelphia's been playing well the last few weeks. Well, I think they could give anyone a tough game. In the second quarter, the Giants and the Cardinals no score. That's a very important game. The winner trying to stay in playoff contention. Brent Nerv will have scores and highlights at halftime and feature on Mark Gastineau, the great defensive pass rusher of the Jets. Greg Bell stopped in his tracks by Randy White. Sooner or later, you know, Randy White is going to be involved very much in the flow of this game. You know that especially, and especially when you take the ball from one side of the field to the other. It's, it takes a long time to get there, and you have to hold your blocks a lot longer. For that reason, it's a lot better if you're going to run that way to run right at them rather than try to go sideways because they respond so well to what they see. We talked at the outset, Hank, about how important first and 10 over the run in the pass was for Buffalo. They got a third and 13 here. That's exactly what they didn't want to get themselves involved with, and they've been in second and long and third and long several times so far in this game. Oops. 
Ferguson. As time is passed, drop incomplete. Incomplete, Mike Mosley. Mosley just came off injured reserve this week. Couldn't hold on to the pass. He's a former quarterback at Texas A&M, and I see he's wearing the gloves today. Yeah, he's got him on, too, and they like him very much. He's got great speed, ran a 4-3-40 uh, when he was in college. And it was a Texas State High School Sprint Champion. He's a flyer. He's been hurt a lot, but they like him very, very much. John Kidd will punt from inside the five. Gary Allen looking for a good return. The Cowboys could have good field position as the snow comes down a little harder. Allen on a fine punt by Kidd is backed up and tackled in his own 35-yard line. A fumble, and Dallas still has it. A 50-yard punt. Richard Park, New York. Hank, the Cowboys say they played in colder weather in St. Louis last week, and, of course, they'd rather not play in these kind of conditions. The condition, really, is very important for the quarterback, and Hogeboom has been used to this kind of weather in Michigan, so he said he doesn't think it'll bother him. He said he didn't throw much, though, when he was in Central <laughs> yeah, right, right. That was the kicker on that. First and ten for the Cowboys on the 35-yard line. Here's Dorsett trying to turn the corner, and he does. Dorsett to the 48-yard line. I'll make it the 44. Rod Cush and Brian Carpenter combined to make the tackle, but what acceleration by Dorsett when he turned right in. It looks like they all had an angle on him, and the next thing you know, he ran right by everybody and made some good yardage on the play. He has gained 100 yards in a game only once this year. He had 84 against the Cardinals, and that's kind of unusual when you talk about a back who's knocking on the door of 1,000 once again. Well, I think that's because they really haven't been able to throw the ball nearly as well as they have in the past, and if you don't throw well, you're not going to run very well either. He picked up eight yards on that carry, second down and two, and here is Tony again, and Dorsett is shy of a first down. It'll be awfully close, maybe by less than a yard. Fred Smurlis and Steve Freeman combine to make the tackle. If he didn't make it, he didn't make it by much, and it'll be about less than a yard. One yard gain. So three tight ends in there for Dallas, Fred Cornwell and Brian Salonen. As Dorsett goes out on third and less than a one, 11.05 remaining in the second quarter, 7-3 Buffalo over Dallas. Yeah. Springs and Newsom are the running backs. And here's Timmy Newsom. And Newsom, second effort, should give him the first down. Chris Keating makes the tackle. Good second effort by Newsom, who, by the way, when he fumbled in the first quarter, was the first time in his career that he had coughed the ball up. You know, that was really a great illustration of sustained effort. He started strong and finished strong, and uh, with the push that he got at the end, you have to be a good finisher as a runner, and that was a great illustration, Dick, of being a good finisher. He was able to get the yardage because he finished good. Cowboys on their 47, first and 10. Trailing 7 to 3. Door set back. Pokeboom. Going for rent throw. Intercepted by Rod Push. Push fumbles the ball. And makes sure that a blue shirt doesn't get a hand on it before it goes out of bounds. It'll be Buffalo ball at the 43 yard line and an interception by Rod Push. First of the year. They were in double coverage that time, Dick, and uh, surprising that Hogaboom threw the ball into that coverage. He's got plenty of time to throw the ball, but he throws it in the middle, and he doesn't see Cush. Cush gets a good jump. Watch him coming from the inside. Makes a leaping interception at the highest point. That's where you want to make the play. Drab now he thinks it's a basketball player. Dribbles the ball, but he finally gets recovered. Second turnover by Dallas. Buffalo Bills did not capitalize on the first turnover. A fumble by Newsom. See what they do here. Rod Cush with the interception. Eugene Lockhart's interception eventually set up Septian's field goal. Booker Moore and Greg Bell in the backfield. First and 10 Bills on their 43-yard line. 10.06 to go in the half. Here's Greg Bell looking for some room. And he carries to the 45-yard line a gain of three. Right now for an NFL Today report, let's check in with our pal, Greg Musburger, right? All right, Dick, this is a marvelous piece of football here. Neil Lomax calls for the fullback right up the middle. Doesn't tell anybody. Keeps the ball. The Giants, of course, they pinch in, and Lomax strolls in for the touchdown. 7-0, back to Dick. 
Well, thank you, Brent. And so far, Hank, Dallas is losing. Washington's losing. I know it's early, but the two leaders in the NFC East are trailing. We mentioned this several times, Dick, but again, the important thing is that Buffalo take advantage of the field position they've had. They've blown a couple of opportunities. They've got to take advantage of this. Second down and seven. Quick toss out to Byron Franklin. And he steps out of bounds. Shy of a first down by about two yards. He gets to midfield. Byron Franklin, Franklin, who's Franklin. the leading receiver on the Bills, coming in with 48 catches, and that's 23 more than the next receiver. But he has had his problems. He has dropped passes in key moments and has scored only one touchdown. Right, he's an example of some of the young players that Kay Stevenson told us about. And that was a great illustration of really not being heads up on the play. He needed three more yards for the first down. The defensive back was so far off of him that time that all he had to do was stay in bounds and turn up field and make the yardage by... Uh, uh, an easy margin, but he ran out of bounds. He didn't give himself enough room, which is typical of teams. When they lose, that's why they lose. Tony Hunter, the tight end, moving. Third down and two. Play action for Ferguson. And Ferguson is going to Mark Kramer. Incomplete. Double covered by Everson Walls and Dexter Klinkscale. So it looked like Ferguson wanted to get a lot of real estate on third and shorthand. Well, that's, uh, you know, that, that's always a chance to make the big play, but I think when you're struggling like they are, uh, I think you ought, you ought to do something with a little higher percentage to move the change and keep the ball moving and keep the ball away from the Cowboys. Gary Allen. And the timing of that pattern uh, that time, Dick, he waited too long to throw the ball. Had he released it just a little bit sooner, he might have been able to get away with it. It will punt. Ferguson, by the way, is 3 for 10 for only 19 yards and an interception. So he's struggling again in the passing department so far. Kid. Good kick. Penalty flag is down. Allen lets the ball bounce on the 15 and it's down as it takes a Dallas roll by the Bills at the 19. But there's a penalty flag upfield. And it'll be against the Buffalo Bills. Hey, Stevenson, former quarterback coach of the Bills, 39 years old, one of the youngest, and I'm sure he's aged a lot this year. Illegal motion, number 95, on the kicking team. Penalty is declined, first down. Sean McNanny, guilty party. Tom Landry looks at the ready list. The penalty is declined, and when we come back, the Cowboys will have it. Enthusiastic crowd, upwards of 70 and Cowboys on their 20. 9.05 remaining in the first half. Dorsett. Plus one, and Dorsett brings it out close to the 30-yard line and near a first down. Eugene Marv and Steve Freeman make the tackle on Dorsett. Watch Marv, number 54. Watch him respond to the play. Goes right into the blocker. Uses his hands very, very well. Comes off the block and helps make the play on the outside. Good reaction by Marv, the linebacker. Bills consider him the best overall defensive player they have. Best thing about him, they say, is that he's mean. Dorsett gained 34 yards on seven carries, second and two now. Well, the Buffalo Bills are chasing like gangbusters. A reverse of some kind would be very appropriate. Dorsett, first down. To the 33-yard line and another first down. Darrell Talley makes the tackle. That's tough against a good cutback runner like Tony, right? Yeah, it is. But again, uh, you know, the way the Buffalo Bills are very aggressive and they're responding very well, well to the flow of the play, some kind of a misdirection, some kind of a reverse, somewhere in this drive when they get maybe a little better field position could be very, very effective. Dick, we can kind of watch for that because they're chasing like gangbusters. Seven minutes and 45 seconds remain in the first half. The Bills scored on the very first play of the ball game. Greg Bell went up the middle, 85 yards for a touchdown. The longest run against the Dallas Cowboys in their history. First and 10 at the 33-yard line, and Hogaboo wants to talk things over and calls a timeout. So the Cowboys have used one of their timeouts here with 7.29 to go in the first half. Maybe closer than Tom Landry figured at this point. The three, the Bills lead the Cowboys. 7.29 to go in the first half. Dick Stockton and Hank Stram. The Bills not only have lost 11 games this year, but they have lost 13 straight and eight in a row at home. 
So they have not been much of a threat here at Rich Stadium, although they lead now. First and ten at the 33 for Hogaboom and company following the timeout. Boy, look at all the room in front of the corners. They're playing very soft, about 10 yards deep. Dorsett almost loses the ball. Ken Johnson covers up. And a penalty Perfect flag carry. is down. Johnson and Keating. Down. There is down. Oh, illegal procedure. It'll be against Dallas. Glenn Titans or the left guard might have been the man, number 63. Illegal motion, number 63. Offense, decline, second down. Decline the penalty. Interesting how the refer the officials marked it off even before they uh, asked the Bills whether they wanted to accept it or not. <laughs> they had to bring it back. The weather seems to have cleared somewhat, although it's never been really that terrific. You look at the offensive story, Buffalo has the edge. Second and ten, Hogaboom looking to throw. Got it down at the line. Might have been Ken Johnson, and it was. And another flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Johnson got a piece of it. And this time, the Cowboys have called for holding, so you would think that the Buffalo defense is putting a lot of pressure on that offensive line. Yeah, they really are. They get good, good penetration, and what they're doing, they're getting off the ball very well, uh, which is so vitally important when you rush the pass. Holding. Number 63, offense, penalty is declined, third down. And it seems to be zeroed in on that one position, left guard. There he is. Keep in mind the Cowboys have had all sorts of problems. They haven't had one unit together much this year. I don't know how they can call holding, uh, holding really, Dick. Uh, you know, the, the way they use their hands and the first move is out with the hands, with the open hand. I think you can call holding on every single play of the game, and uh, as a result, you never know when they're going to call it. The Bills think they have this year. Yeah. <laughs> Third down and 10. Sean McNatty, number 95, comes in as a designated pass rusher. Here's Dorsett trying to break one, and Dorsett is tackled at the 40-yard line, shy of a first down by four yards, and they'll have to kick. But right now, let's check in with Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? Dick, two quick developments. The Redskins have just scored a touchdown on the Eagles, and the Packers have gone ahead of the Rams. The score here is 7 3. Eddie Lee Ivory on the buck. Let's go back to Dick. All right, Brent, thank you very much. So the Redskins coming back against the Eagles. Green Bay trying to keep their late season splurge going as Danny White is in the punt. Don Wilson is back for the Buffalo Bills. Six minutes and 40 seconds remain in the first half. Buffalo's defense has been pretty good so far. It really has been. Good punt by Danny White. Sends Wilson back to the 24. Nowhere to go for Don Wilson. And he is stopped at the 29-yard line by Jeff Rohra. Dave Stevenson's Bills lead, and they'll have the ball when we come back to Orchard Park. Buffalo Bills cling to a 7-3 lead. They have failed to capitalize on two turnovers. And other good situations. They missed the field goal attempt on a bad snap, yet they lead on Landry and the Cowboys 7-3. First and 10 Bills on the 29-yard line. Greg Bell into the line and gets almost five yards on the play. The center on the club is Will Grant. He is a fifth-year player. And yesterday, you were watching a water bucket used by the Bills. Yeah, I... I went over to see Ferguson and also Will Grant uh, in their new indoor facility, and here this big bucket of water was in front of the center. I thought maybe he had some bait in there and was going to go fishing. But anyway, what he was doing, he was dunking the ball in the water so that they would get the, the experience of uh, using a wet ball in case it rained or snowed here this afternoon, and they did it for about 15 minutes, and it's a very good drill. Second down and six after 33. Bell again. Bell picks up maybe a yard. Ed Jones making the tackle. That must be the best way to practice for inclement weather, something that they have a lot of here. Yeah, it's a good thing that they have the indoor facility. Had they tried to do it outside, they'd been working with ice. <laughs> and people say, why don't they work outside if the conditions are going to be that way? But I guess that's not really feasible. Well, no, you really don't get the concentration and the execution that you do when it's inside. They work a lot better. And you get a lot more done from an overall standpoint than you do when you work outside in the cold, inclement weather. 
Third down and four at the 35. The 4-0 defense is in there for the Cowboys with five minutes to go in the first half. Ferguson finds Riddick. Pass is complete in the first down, but a penalty marker has been thrown. So let's hold everything. Riddick coming out of the backfield and holding against the Buffalo Bills. Second time today. And that has been their nemesis from the first game on. So that'll nullify that first down. Holding number 65, offense. Still third down. Trying to block Randy White. And uh, you have a tendency to do that, trying to block him. Tim Vogler, number 65 on Randy White. A lot of people try to hold him because he gets such great penetration. Vogler, of course, from Ohio State, playing in place of Jim Richer and his hands full against Randy White today. Anyone that plays White has his hands full. Third down and 14. Buffalo has 204 yards and penalties this year than their opposition. Third and 14. Ferguson going up on top to Riddick. And it's tipped off. Incomplete. Several Cowboys had a shot, including Thurman. But it was Bill Bates who deflected the ball. That time the Cowboys uh, faked the blitz with the two safety or two corner men coming in, but they backed off and the middle was wide open. You see Bates turning and running, man for man coverage with Riddick down the field, but the ball was thrown just a little bit too late, Dick. That's what happened on the play, and for that reason it hit his shoulder pads and bounced right off. Joe Ferguson has been struggling before his injury. He had six touchdowns, two interceptions. Since then, three touchdowns and 11 interceptions. And John Kidd will be punting to Gary Allen again. Booming kick. Terrific kick. Sends Allen back inside his 20. And it's hit at the 24. Good coverage by the Buffalo Bills. Stan David making the tackle. 53-yard kick by John Kidd. Well, don't forget, CBS Sports coverage of college basketball tips off next Saturday live, 1 o'clock Eastern. Louisville against Indiana. The first time teams coached by Denny Crum and Louisville and Bobby Knight of Indiana have faced each other. That'll be quite a contest between these two great teams and two really great coaches. And there's a fellow on Indiana named Delray Brooks, a much-heralded freshman who's going to make his college debut in that ball game. You know about Steve Alford of Indiana, who's the Olympian. That's next Saturday. First and ten Cowboys on the 25. Seven to three in favor of the Bills. Play action, Hogaboom. Screams it out to Dorsett. Rome's had a first shot at Tony Dorsett, who carries it out to the 29-yard line. Chris Keating and Jim Hazlitt make the tackle on Dorsett. And the Cowboys have really executed some very good screens in this game, and of course it's typical of uh, what happens when a team uses so much zone defenses as the Buffalo Bills. Four minutes and ten seconds remain in the first half. You know, the other thing, uh, Dick, they're using so much zone and double, double, double zone. The middle is open with a pass or the run. For that reason, draws would be very effective up the middle. An audible by Kogaboom on second and six. Rolling out. He saw something in the pass. Almost picked off by Eugene Marr. Went right through his hands. And that could have been a dangerous situation for the Cowboys. Fred Smurlis puts some pressure. He rolls to his right. Watch Smurlis get away from the block. It's a little late, but he gets penetration. It really doesn't have any effect on the play. Fans have been kind of tough at times on the Bills, and Smurlis and Jim Hazlitt have a radio show, and they were thinking of changing the name to the Smurlis Hazlitt Cheap Shot Hour. That's what they were getting from some of the fans this year. Then they really were getting cheap shots. <laughs> <laughs> James Jones in the game with Ron Springs. The pass. It's caught by Ron Springs out of the backfield and a first down for the Cowboys on third and six to the 41-yard line, a pickup of 12. He had four catches against the Cardinals, Springs did, including a touchdown. But that's a soft spot of that area right in the middle, and they weren't concerned about getting too much. They just wanted to make the first down, and they got it. 320. Tom Landry told us yesterday the three good games the Cowboys have played, in his opinion, were against the Rams, the Bears, and last week against the Cardinals. And it really 
kind of thought last week's game was the best game by far of all of them. First and ten, Hogaboom's pass is caught by Conte. Deep into Buffalo territory to the 36-yard line. Charles Rome's on the tackle, and that was good for 23 yards. Zone again that time, and, and uh, the key really, no pass rush whatsoever. Look at all the time. The play action fake and a pretty good one. A pretty He's tight between the back and the quarterback. Got time enough to throw the ball. Cros Cosby runs a crossing pattern, catches the ball way over near the hash mark, and uh, picks up the necessary yardage for the first down. 234 in running. First and 10 at the Buffalo 36. Seven to three bills, but they have squandered many opportunities in this first half. Dorsett. He had Kirk Peterson blocking, but Darrell Talley coming up strong. And Brian Carpenter had good penetration. And Timmy Newsom really got an excellent block on the outside okay. linebacker that time, Keating. Uh, but in spite of that, with the force on the outside forced the tackle, and he didn't get nearly as much out of the play as it looked like he might when the play started. So we have two minutes remaining in the first half. Our two-minute warning is in effect. Buffalo leading Dallas 7-3, and the Cowboys trying to get closer. Keep in mind that the Dallas Cowboys have two timeouts remaining. Hogelboom had called one earlier in this quarter. It is second down and 10 at the 35. Two minutes to go in the half. They still got a great opportunity for some kind of a misdirection play somewhere along the line here because Buffalo is really chasing. The action. Hogelboom. In intended, he had Cosby short and Hill long, incomplete, and third and ten. And Ben Williams right in front of him that time, putting some pressure on him, which made him throw the ball before he actually wanted to. The Bills' defense has been marked by no serious pressure on the quarterback all year. Only 17 sacks coming in, but it looks like a different defensive line today. Yeah, they are doing a little bit better, but uh, most of the time, why it's on the big play to Cosby, for example, there was no pass rush whatsoever. Okay. Third down and ten. And you would think that this would be a play in which you would expect good rush. But I think you're right, Dick. I think they has been they have rushed the passer much better today than they have in most games that we've seen them this year. On third and ten, Hogaboom has time, completes his pass, and here is Renfro has a first down inside the 15. And now the Cowboys in good position to try to score a touchdown. That was good for 22 yards, and Charles Rome made the play. And Rome's Missed the tackle initially. Look at the stunts inside, trying to get to the quarterback. He throws the ball outside the rim throw. He makes a quick move to the outside. Rome misses the tackle. He goes down to the field, down the field, and picks up more yardage on the play. Here you see it again. It watch, watch him come off the ball. Watch Renfro make the catch. Watch the missed tackle by Rodney Bellinger. That was number 36. And Rome finally makes the tackle downfield, number 26. So Mike Renfro has caught two passes today after going two games without catching one. It is first and 10 at the 13 for Dallas. They're looking to take the lead. Hoga Bull to the outside. Complete to Ron Springs and out of bounds at the 10. A gain of three. It stops the clock with 142. Chris Keating making the tackle. But the point you brought up moments ago, Hank, the pressure has indeed been good, but on the two passes, Cosby, the 23-yard gain, and Renfro, 22, they did not really put much pressure on him. Which means that it hasn't been consistent. Like, it, that's the problem they've had all year long. It's been a stock market pass rush. It's been up and down and never consistent. Renfro has established a career high for reception yardage, breaking his mark when he was with the Oilers in 1980. Timmy Newsom is in the lineup now, along with the door set. Hogaboom looking, being rushed, his pass is caught, touchdown, but a penalty mark is down. Doug Cosby for the touchdown, but let's wait. And it's apparently against the Cowboys. by the score. Bob McElwee will explain it. Might have been pushing off. Let's see what they call. Offensive pass interference. Number 84. It was Cosby, your right hand, who pushed off, got free in the end zone, and now is explaining what he did to Gary Hogaboom. Watch Cos Cosby come off the ball now. See, we see, see the push. There he is there, but you can't see a good shot of what he did. But evidently what he did, he pushed 
pushed off the linebacker and then came to the inside, and that's why he was so open on the play. That happens a lot of the times, and it's good if you don't get caught, but that time he got caught. So an offensive penalty nullifies a touchdown. Let's see how the Cowboys respond. It's second down, 17. Back to the 20. Cowboys go into their spread. Springs and James Jones, number 23. Coming back from injury in there. Pressure on Hogaboom. He's going to run it. Penalty flag flies. Hogaboom at the 15 and hit hard at the 14. Clock stops with 128. It was Rodney Bellinger and Darrell Talley going after Hogaboom with a mention. And I think it's very evident that any time that you see a quarterback run, here it is. Holding against Dallas, that'll bring back that game. Anytime, anytime that the defensive coaches have an opportunity to, when they talk about their defensive players, when a quarterback takes off and run, if he's going to run, he's under, in a good position to hit, make sure you really give him a good shot and gang tackle. Do everything you can. Holding. Number 63. Offense. Still second half. Let's tight, sir. That's about three for him, I think, isn't it? He had a penalty on a legal procedure, then holding, and now he's called again for holding. The penalty picture is even. The Bills holding on to that 7-3 lead. You think that string is getting kind of worn down for the Bills with that lead? They're hanging in there tough. They're playing hard. They've had many opportunities to make it a much bigger cushion, but they couldn't do it. Second down and 27, back at the 30. Hogaboom wants to pick up a lot of chunk. The yardage is intercepted. Intercepted by Brian Carpenter. And the Bills get it back. Brian Carpenter acquired from the Washington Redskins early this year. The fourth starting left cornerback in the Bills with his third interception of the year. Look at all the stunts up front, trying to get to the quarterback. He throws outside, over the top of the defensive back, trying to hit Hill. The carpenter, number 30, has great anticipation and makes the interception. Here we see it again. Pass was intended for Hill. Watch Hill go down the field, break to the outside. It's a very deliberate break outside, which permitted Carpenter to anticipate the ball coming and made the interception. And now the Buffalo Bills have possession, first and 10. And for Dallas, the third turnover. Third turnover for Dallas. Pass is caught. Blade went on, and Byron Franklin on the receiving end picks up some yardage to the 28-yard line, a gain of about four. The clock runs nearly a minute to go. Bills have all three of their timeouts remaining. Second down and six. The pass from Ferguson to Franklin. He'll get the first down, and his second effort brings him to the 42. And now Buffalo wants to up their lead. They got to call timeout. And they do. Michael Downs and Dexter Klinkscale on the stop. And Tom Landry is not at all pleased with the Dallas Cowboy performance. He knows that the Cowboys are lucky to be trailing by only 7-3. to three. Tom Landry agonizing a bit at the sideline. He, he told us yesterday he goes back to the 60s when he compares this year's club to another Dallas outfit that he's coached. Yeah, I had to think a long time to uh, remember uh, when this team had this was in this kind of a situation during the regular season. First and 10 for the Bills on their own 42-yard line. They have two timeouts remaining. You saw 51 seconds on the clock. Joe Ferguson being chased by Randy White and almost a dangerous pass. Mark Bramer and Dexter Quinkscale came close to getting a shot at picking that ball off. You know, the thing they have to be thinking in terms of, you know, they're, they got about 60 yards to go for a touchdown, but really they ought to be thinking in terms of going 30 or 35 just to get close enough, first of all, to get the field goal, and then whatever else they get after that is fine. But that's what they're thinking ought to be, to throw two 15-yard passes to go 30 yards and get in there within range of kicking the field goal. And one thing that's apparent is that neither quarterback is playing that well in the first half. And the middle of the defense is wide open. If they can get the ball and get pass protection, something in the middle should be there. Ferguson has really been struggling. Holgram lately. Second down and 10 at the 42. 46 seconds to go. Pressure by the Cowboys. This pass is caught by Mark Bramer. Out of bounds, first down in the Dallas territory to the 47, a gain of 10 yards, but it stops the clock. 
40 seconds to go. And they still have two timeouts. That time, Preston Denard was wide open coming across the middle, but he threw outside, uh, and that was a good choice, of course, but he had two choices, really, and the choice outside was good because he could stop the clock. The Bills leading 7-3, to three, but they've had other opportunities. The Dallas fumble, deflected punt, an interception, a bad snap on a field goal attempt, the first down nullified, all sorts of things have backfired. First and 10 at the 46 of Dallas. The middle, the middle is still very vulnerable. Ferguson chased away. And he can't get away from Jim Jeffcoat, who picks up a big play. First sack of the ball game for Jeffcoat, his seventh of the season. And a timeout is called. We want to remind you Thursday, the special Thanksgiving Day edition of the NFL Today, former Packers star Willie Davis and Max, Max McGee will be featured, both champions of the great Lombardi teams of the 60s. And they've gone on to become successful businessmen. This story much more Thanksgiving Day. And, of course, it'll be the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions, 12 noon Eastern time, one of the great traditional rivalries in football history. Well, they really have been terrific, and people all over the country kind of look forward to that game and have for a long time. Oh, you go back to the days of Bobby Lane and the Lions, Tobin Roth of the Packers before Tobin Roth became a Lion. And, of course, the Thanksgiving Day, Packers and Lions always brings back the memory. Buffalo has one timeout remaining with 33 seconds on the clock. They'll have a second down and 16 following the sack by Jeffcoat back in their own territory at their own 47. Yeah, they have to try to get something in the middle, I think, between the hash marks. Uh, Dick, uh, that area is open to where they're playing if they have time enough to throw the ball downfield that deep. If they can get it down about the 30-yard line, 30, 25, 30, they're going to be in good shape to at least try a field goal. Tom Landry's team, we've been talking about Buffalo's problems and mistakes they've made, but the Cowboys really, with three turnovers, a touchdown nullified by a penalty, have taken themselves out of a good part of this game. Second and 16, Ferguson has time up the middle of Mosley, and it's almost intercepted. Michael Downs had the best chance, and he's, because he has four interceptions tied for the club lead, and thinking he could have had number five right there. Down and away is not good. Down and across is the pattern that you have to throw here, uh, Dick, because uh, they've got a safety man. Look at this. He leaped very high in the air, almost made the interception, but there were too many people trying to go into the post, and that's why that ball was almost intercepted by Mike Downs, number 26. It's got to be down and in. If you're going to make the play inside, it's got to be a sharp turn inside into the open area, and that's the only chance you had. You can't throw it down and away. Third down and 16. Joe Ferguson continues to struggle, and the Bills have not had much success, as you can see, on third down. 27 seconds showing in the first half. Don Smerrick putting pressure on Ferguson, who just throws the ball away. He had several people nearby, including some... <laughs> well, I thought it was a lineman, but it was some of the special teams people ready to come on the field. Joe Ferguson is really unraveled in this first half, but his team is leaving and that leading, and that's the main thing. Victor Scott, number 22, really had great coverage on Byron Franklin that time, who did go over in the middle, but he covered him very, very well. But the big thing really was that he didn't have time enough to throw the ball. The pass rush was too severe. So John Kidd will punt again. Ferguson, by the way, has completed only six of 17 passes for 50 yards. I got some news I didn't realize yesterday. John Kidd is the son of Max Kidd, who played at Purdue University when I was there. He must be a pretty old guy. <laughs> <laughs> he gets off a good kick, and he has been a terrific punter. It goes out of bounds. 12 seconds will show on the clock. John Kidd been one of the bright spots in an otherwise dismal year for the Buffalo Bills. Well, coming up at halftime, the NFL today, Brendan Irv with scores and highlights, and a close look at the physical specimen, Mark Gastineau, the great pass rusher of the New York Jets. Twelve seconds remaining. The Bills scored on Greg Bell's 85-yard touchdown run, the very first play of the game, and that's the longest run in history against the Cowboys. Set the end with a field goal early in the second to account for the Dallas point. That's where we've been. And Hogaboom is just going to let the clock run down. Well, I guess, Hank, you could say what might have been 
would tell a long story in this first half, but what is, is the Buffalo Bills leading the favorite Dallas Cowboys 7-3. to three. They're playing with a lot of animation, a lot of emotion, and uh, we've touched on this. They blew a couple of opportunities with a good field position to get more points on the board, but they didn't. The important thing is they're still winning 7-3. to three. And we'll be back with Brandon Company in the NFL today. A time when nobody asked the question, where's the beef? But today, all the emphasis is on bodybuilding and muscle tone. In fact, most NFL players now spend almost as much time in the weight room as they do on the practice field. They have learned the value of pumping iron. Strength conditioning plays such a large role in shaping up the performance of NFL stars. But there is one star in the league who combines natural speed and strength with a conditioning program that is almost fanatical. For Mark Gastineau of the Jets, hardly a day goes by when he doesn't feel the need for a lift. Weight training is a must in the NFL today. If you don't lift during preseason, if you don't lift uh, at least four months before the season, you're going to find yourself laying on your back uh, by these big offensive tackles that are coming in. Pumping iron has kept Gastineau off his back, but opposing quarterbacks have not been so fortunate. The leading sacker in the NFL has all the muscles he needs for the job. But the secret to his success is not the biceps so much as his speed. With the ability to run a 4-5-40, Mark Gastineau may be the fastest lineman ever. If Mark Gastineau didn't have his legs, he wouldn't be the football player that, uh, that he is. To be very powerful and very quick, you have to have good, strong legs. Gastineau takes pride in his work, no question. And when he's at the top of his form, no quarterback is nimble enough to escape his grasp. But as much as he loves to make a sack, Mark is not driven by a desire to knock quarterbacks out of a game. Quarterbacks are not all bad guys. Uh, you know, they're basically good guys. Uh, they don't want to get hurt. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. I don't have the Lyle Alzado attitude of, you know, wanting to kill somebody. Uh, that's just not me. If I can put a quarterback down and I'm credited for a quarterback sack and I've helped the team out, I've done my job and I'm as happy as anybody could possibly be. In his basement, you'll find $60,000 worth of weights, and they get plenty of work. I don't think that there's anybody out there that doesn't want to look good. I got a little bit too consumed at first when I started looking good, when I could see my abdominal muscles, and uh, I'm sure that my wife got uh, sick of looking at me, looking in the mirror. But to be 275, 280 pounds, you don't want to look sloppy. Nor is Mark averse to showing off his body in public. But muscles are not just for show. It's a very important factor in me being as good as I am. And uh, for me to stay in the top bracket in the NFL and be as good as I am and perform like I am, I've got to keep doing it. Herb, I think for a time that folks thought that Mark Gastineau might be an invention of the New York media, but that is certainly not the case. Well, no, no, he's a great football player, but, you know, but every player goes to some kind of weight training. But the difference today in weight training versus the old days is that every move you make is incorporated with your athletic movement. So Gastineau doing those forearm curls is doing that so he can deliver a real sharp blow to those offensive tackles. That's good to me. <laughs> Let me remind everybody, Herb, that with all the action cooking around the league right now, we're going to be back after the game you're watching, and we will have scores and highlights, and we'll take you to some live action if a good one's still cooking. But right now, let's send you back to the stadium and the game you're enjoying on CBS. Thank you for your attention. We're back at halftime at the Rich Stadium in Orchard Park, New York, and the fans are very much in this ball game. They came to see whether the Buffalo Bills could upset the Dallas Cowboys and win their first game, and through 30 minutes of the game, they've done it. 7-3 to three they lead, and your remarks about the game so far. Surprise, for sure. Well, it is a surprise, but I think the biggest challenge the Dallas Cowboys had coming into the game was to be mentally ready for the game. That's always, I don't care how much you talk about it, what you say about it, during the course of the week when you play a team that's never won a game all season long, it's tough to get ready, and I question whether or not the Dallas Cowboys were ready. Here was the very first play of the game, and uh, Bell goes right off tackle to the left side. Good blocking by Jones and Vogler. The middle linebacker overruns the play, and Bell goes all the way over uh, 85 yards, changes the scoreboard, gets six on the board, and they go ahead 7 to nothing. Now, don't you think, Hank, as we look at Bell complete that spectacular and stunning 85-yard touchdown run, that, that would wake the Dallas Cowboys up, and they uh, proceeded to turn the ball over three times. Buffalo couldn't capitalize, but they didn't wake up after that run. No, sometimes they're stunned. You have sometime when you're a better team, you have to be stunned to get back in a ball game. They were stunned, but they didn't react that way at all. What quickly will make the difference in a game like this? Well, I think in the second half, the, the Cowboys 
just have to be patient and do what they can do well, and that's their chance to get back in the game. All right, Hank and I will be back to Rich Stadium for the second half of the Cowboys-Bills game in just a moment. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company, we're going to be there for you. And by Sears, where you'll find great value. There's more for your life at Sears. Dick Stockton and Hank Stram back at Rich Stadium, 7-3 at halftime. New York Congressman Jack Kemp, the quarterback of Buffalo's AFL championship teams in 64 and 65, became the second player inducted into the Bills' all-time honor roll. There he is right up there with his number 15. The only other one, O.J. Simpson, and he was inducted in 1980. And, of course, Jack Kemp drew a tremendous applause from the crowd, close to 80,000. We don't know what the no-show situation is, but they have been vehemently in favor of the Bills today, no question. Sometimes... You know, sometimes when a when a guy like Jack, uh, Jeff or Jackie Kemp reaches a level of excellence and the recognition that he has, they forget maybe that he wasn't the great football player that he really was. He was super. He had a great arm. Look at the halftime stats. You talked about how Buffalo had to run the ball, and they've done it so far. Yes, they game in just a moment. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company. We're going to be there for you. And by Sears, where you'll find great value. There's more for your life at Sears. Dick Stockton and Hank Stram back at Rich Stadium, 7-3 at halftime. New York Congressman Jack Kemp, the quarterback of Buffalo's AFL championship teams in 64 and 65, became the second player inducted into the Bills' all-time honor roll. There he is right up there with his number 15. The only other one, O.J. Simpson, and he was inducted in 1980. And, of course, Jack Kemp drew a tremendous applause from the crowd Close to 80,000. We don't know what the no-show situation is, but they have been vehemently in favor of the Bills today. No question. Sometimes, you know, sometimes when a when a guy like Jack, uh, Jeff or uh, Jackie Kemp uh, reaches a level of excellence and the recognition that he has, they forget maybe that he wasn't the great football player that he really was. He was super. He had a great arm. Look at the halftime stats. You talked about how Buffalo had to run the ball, and they've done it so far. Yes, they have, and I think they have to go go back to that and uh, be successful with it in the second half. And again, the big down is first and 10. The turnover story, Dallas has uh, turned it over three times to only one for Buffalo, and the time of possession favors the Cowboys. It's 7-3, to three, Buffalo leads, but they're going to have to get a lot of the horseshoes going for them again in the second half to play a lot better. And I think they can come up with a big play. I mentioned in the first half, they never use it, but I think they can come up with a big play on some kind of a misdirection or reverse in the second half because the Buffalo Bills are very, very aggressive in chasing everything they see. Allen and McSwain are back for the Cowboys, and Chuck Nelson will kick off for the Buffalo Bills. Bills have lost eight straight games here at Rich Stadium, 13 in a row overall. A year ago at this time, they were seven and four. Short kick and Gary Allen at the six-yard line returns it for the Cowboys. Fumble, loose ball. Dallas may have it. Let's wait and see, and they do at the 19-yard line. Close call for the Dallas Cowboys. Here he makes the catch. Allen running down the side, the right side, between the numbers and the hash mark, sideline. The ball is kicked out of there, knocked loose. It hits a player. It hits a player in the back, but the Dallas Cowboys recover the fumble, and they have possession first and ten on the 19. Brian Salonen was right there, first and ten for the Cowboys, and Tony Dorsett on the first play is hit behind the line of scrimmage by Ken Johnson. And for an NFL Today report, here is Brent Musburger. Dick, we've had a development in Chicago. The Lions have gone ahead. Danielson beautifully escapes trouble here. Gets the pass to Chadwick in the end zone. And, of course, if the Packers win and the Bears lose, there's only a two-game difference in the NFC Central, but a long way still to go. Back to Dick. That Central race could be something, and so could Tony Dorsett, who limps off the field following the first carry of the second half. So Dorsett is shaken up, and that will bear watching. James Jones replaces him, number 23, in the lineup. Second down, 11, at the 19. Ogaboom will go to the air to Cosby. First down, Cosby and out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Charles Romes makes the hit. 
Ogaboom played it in conservative fashion in the first half, Hank, with percentage plays, and it looks like he's starting off in the same fashion. Yeah, they're not going to change the personality of the defense of the Buffalo Bills, and they're going to have to continue to throw the ball short and uh, be patient, run the ball, and throw it short. They hit Cosby on a crossing pattern that time against that zone, and again, the key, he had plenty of time to throw the ball. Ogaboom. His first half numbers, percentage-wise, pretty good, but he was not especially sharp. First and 10 of the 31. And here is Jones carrying for the first time, and he gets a couple. Jim Hazlitt makes the tackle. James Jones coming back from injured reserve. This is the fourth week he has been back, and he caught his first NFL touchdown pass against the Cardinals last week. But the player is shaken up. And it appears to be Phil Posderick, the right tackle. And that would only add to the woes, Hank, the Cowboys have had in their offensive line. They lost Jim Cooper. Pat Donovan retired earlier. Howard Richards now has been lost. Well, you know, the funny thing about it, too, Herb Scott was supposed to be uh, too injured to play guard. Uh, but when they finally got another per a player hurt, he had to go in to play left tackle. And he played wonderfully well right, last week against the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, it's amazing how well he's playing, considering the fact that he's been hurt so much. Brian Baldinger may have to come in for him. It's a very thin offensive line situation, and they activated John Hunt this week. Well, the Louisville Cardinals and the Indiana Hoosiers live 1 o'clock Eastern as NCAA basketball returns to CBS next Saturday. Delray Brooks, we've mentioned him before, and you'll be hearing Billy Packer talk a lot more about him next week and in the career ahead. He's a highly touted freshman for the Indiana Hoosiers, as if Bobby Knight didn't need a lot more talent. People think that Indiana will be a big power this year, and of course, Louisville under Denny Crum always is. Buffalo quarterback club will be tomorrow. While we have a moment here, and Posderick is on the turf, let's discuss, Hank, our conversation with Tom Landry. And of course, talk, people talk about coaches, whether they're going to continue. There have been some rumors. Will Tom Landry hang him up after this year? Well, we read in the paper last week that Tex Schramm said that Tom Landry, in all probability, would be the coach again next year and wanted to continue to coach. We asked that question of Tom yesterday in our meeting with him, and he kind of smiled, and he said, well, I feel great, and I enjoy coaching, and I want to continue to uh, coach. Uh, that's the way I feel today, getting ready for the Buffalo Bills. Now, you know, how you interpret that, I really don't know. He said he's ready today, but how will he feel after the season? Uh, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. But it wasn't anything definitive about Reedy staying on again next year, was it? He had. There's no question about it. And, you know, the one thing that Tom did tell us, he says, you know, I don't know if I want to go through another building process. And he said that the way the Cowboys are right now, he says, they used to know they were going to come up with a big play late in the game and win. He says it's going to take a few years for the Cowboys to get back to where they have been in their vintage days. And, and again, when you walked away from it, you scratched your head a little bit because you thought maybe we got a little tap dance from Tom because we didn't know really what his feelings were, except that he's very interested in coaching this week against the Buffalo Bills. Is that right? That's right. And, uh, you know, and, and maybe Alicia, his wife, is the only one that really knows uh, what he's thinking down the line. Uh, Derek is out of the ball game, and Brian Baldiger, number 62, is in there. So the Cowboys have four guards playing on the line right now. Second down and eight. Ogilvy getting some pressure, and the pass is complete. Tony Hill at the 27-yard line. Making the tackle is Brian Carpenter, who has one of two interceptions today. Tony Hill with his jersey askew going back into the huddle. He's been the big play receiver the last six years, but he's only caught four passes in the last two coming into this one. He was hurt early. Third and three. Just under 13 minutes remaining in the third quarter. Seven to three. The Bills lead the Cowboys. Trying to pull a big upset here. Hogaboom's pass caught by Jones. First down and out of bounds. At the 47-yard line, Darrell Talley knocked James Jones out of bounds, first down. And the, and the Buffalo Bills that time blitzed all three linebackers, but they, they did not blitz very aggressively, did not get any pressure on the quarterback. Watch them. Here they come again. They did not create any kind of, look at the linebackers coming, and they it's kind of a deliberate uh, blitz. Nine-yard game. 
No rush whatsoever. He gets the ball out in good shape, and they have another first down. And we'll be watching to see what's going on the sidelines with Tony Dorsett, and now Dorsett has come back in the ball game, so we don't have to look there. Just look behind Hogaboo. First and 10 at the 47. Renfro in motion, and here is Tony. He was hit hard. Dorsett, Jerry. Shy of midfield, Eugene Marv, who's known for hitting hard. He gave him a couple for Dorsett. While well, Dorsett has gained 100 yards in a game only once this year, he has a string going, Hank, of six straight 100-yard efforts against AFC East teams. Well, that's quite an achievement when you hold him to under 100 yards, but I think really the big difference in the personality of the Dallas team this year has really been the fact that they really haven't thrown the ball nearly as well as they have in the past, and that's why they haven't run the ball nearly as well. Second down and eight. The ball shy of midfield at the 49. Play action. Hogaboo. Pass. Knocked down nicely. Steve Freeman, the strong safety. Broken up by Freeman. Watch again. The key. Not much pressure. Even though they have a four-man line this time, they don't get much pressure. Still has plenty of time to stay into the pocket and watch. Watch what happens here. Steve Freeman, number 22, comes over and knocks the ball down. Renfro was the intended receiver. He had gone in motion. Even though they didn't get good pressure, we saw Smurlis and Johnson with their hands up, and they've had success that way. Yeah, that's right. Third down and eight. Duriel Harris, who was signed this week, is in the lineup and going deep for Duriel Harris. Broken up, incomplete. Charles Holmes and Don Wilson. Duriel Harris, nine-year veteran signed by the... The Cowboys, after he was waived by the Browns, and of course played most of his career with the Miami Dolphins, in good quickness, and they were going to him deep. You know, one thing that you have to be careful of, anytime that you're a big play team and a big play personality like the Dallas Cowboys, you have a tendency sometimes to not to be as patient as you should be when the defense is playing you soft. There was a great illustration. He still tried to throw the ball deep, even though there was double coverage downfield and there was a good chance the play was going to be intercepted. Danny White will punt to Don Wilson, who combined to make that play. So Harris gets his first taste of Cowboy action. Dallas waved. Harold Carmichael, the veteran this week. Good high kick. Wilson feels the punt and is tackled at the 14-yard line. 38-yard punt, but that's not the story. Danny White has hemmed the, Dal the Buffalo Bills inside their 15. Stram back at Rich Stadium in Orchard Park, and the Bills will get their chance again, but inside the 15, first and 10 at the 14-yard line. See what they do. Greg Bell, you talk about the running game. He's gained 103 yards and 10 carries in the first half. In the backfield with Booker Moore. Play action, though, on first down. And here's Bell as the receiver. Picks up eight yards on the play. Lockhart and Dickerson combined to make the play on Greg Bell. Well, the defense of the uh, Dallas Cowboys is not really paying much attention to that play action fake. The defensive backs hurried back into their zones that time, very, very deep, and the only place you could throw the ball was in front of the linebackers and put between them, and that's what they did that time, faking to the Greg Bell and then throwing the ball to him between the linebackers. Second down and two. And here's Bell. Fights his way for the first down to the 27-yard line. Ed Jones making the tackle. We talked to Kay Stevenson about Greg Bell, and of course he's been impressive as a rusher, and of course he's seventh in total yards per scrimmage, but still Stevenson said that he is not quite the complete player yet, but uh, the rookie, he's doing a terrific job. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, for a first-year player, and especially after losing a guy like Cribs, why they expected uh, an awful lot from this young guy, and I, he hasn't had an opportunity to run the ball that much, probably about 10 times a game. Uh, if they have an opportunity to run him more, I think he's going to be much, much more effective. But when you're behind, it's hard to run him. That's right. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Ferguson under deep pressure. Pass incomplete intended for Tony Hunter, the tight end. Ferguson was getting a lot of heat from the Dallas line right there. John Dutton in particular. Pass for Hunter. You talk about Joe Cribs. When you lose the likes of a Joe Cribs, 
Butler, Lewis, Jim Kelly, the quarterback to the USFL. That's a lot of firepower on offense. Big play people, that's what hurts, you know. Uh, and talking about big play people, Dan Randy White made an interesting observation. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Second down and 10. Ferguson's numbers aren't impressive. He's been under siege, but the name of the game is win, and the Bills are winning 7-3. to three. Rolling out and being chased. Good block, and the pass is thrown out of bounds. He was going for Tony Hunter. Incomplete. You were talking about Randy White. Yeah, he made a remark. He said, this is not an e egotistical or prima donna football team anymore. All of that individual stuff is gone. We finally wiped it all out, which means that he felt that in the past they were kind of a prima donna team. And uh, uh, now, after that win last week, I think he felt that they kind of gathered together and they didn't care who did what. The only thing that was important is winning the game. But they haven't played like that this afternoon, have they? Bill Posderick, who, by the way, has a twisted knee, and he is going to be out of action the rest of the game. So the woes mount for the Dallas Cowboys offensive line. Mitchell Brookins, number 81, is in as a third wide receiver. Out of the shotgun, third and 10 at the 27. The pass intended for Preston Denard, and Ron Fellows was defending on the play, but a terrific safety blitz by Bill Bates in the right Cowboys 4-0 defense and Bates plays the linebacker position in that one. Ron Fellows, 27, responded very well to the ball that was thrown and knocked it down. Penalty marker thrown. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 40. Defense. Bill Bates. It'll be an automatic first down, so Bates was a little bit overzealous on that play. On that safety blitz. And that will give the Bills new life. They'll keep the ball, and it'll be a first down. 15 yards, and they'll mark it at the 42-yard line. 10 minutes and 2 seconds remain in the third quarter. K. Stevenson's Bills, 0-11, hanging on to a 7-3 lead over the 7-4 Dallas Cowboys. Bob Riddick is in the backfield. Ferguson's pass. Caught by Byron Franklin. Short of midfield. At the 49, Eugene Lockhart makes the hit. And a gain of about five on the play. That was a time pattern that time. He got rid of the ball very quickly. Hunter, the tight end, Tony Hunter, who will come into the game with 19 catches, missed several games because of a back injury. But he's an outstanding player. They tried to lick him deep that time, but he couldn't get deep, and they wound up throwing the ball to the secondary receiver, Byron Franklin. Hunter has caught seven passes in the last two games. He's joined by Mark Bramer at tight end. Greg Bell is the single back. Second down and three at the 49. Here is Bell with Ken Jones blocking. Okay. And Bell is stopped at the 50, so it'll be third down. And two, Randy White and Anthony Dickerson. Prevented the first down by Greg Bell, so it'll be third and short for the Buffalo Bills, and they bring in Rob Riddick and the third wide receiver, Mitchell Brookins. Cowboys come in with Don Smerick in their 4-0 defense. The last time they were in this situation, they tried to go deep and uh, tried to get the big play on third and short. Let's see what they elect to do here. They're, gonna, they're in the shotgun. Ferguson has had a terrible time with the passing percentage in this game. Ferguson pass, almost picked off. Ron Fellows defending. Preston Denard was the intended receiver, and Fellows came close to picking it off. He, he really did. Mark Bramer that time on a delayed pattern was really wide open near the numbers, but he never saw him. It looked like he made up his mind he was going to throw the ball outside and didn't take a look at anybody else at all. So it'll be fourth down, and John Kidd will be in to punt once again, and he has been terrific in that department. You know, either one of these teams have been very proficient all season long on third down situations, converting the third down. They're about 31, 33 percent, which is not very good. And uh, if you don't convert on third downs, boy, you have a hard time moving the football. It will punt. Gary Allen is back at the 10 yard line with eight minutes and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Good high kick and Allen going to let the ball bounce. It goes into the end zone for a touchback. Dallas will have the ball again. And the question is, 
How long can Buffalo's defense hold off the Dallas Cowboys? They've done it so far. Occurred on the very first play when Greg Bell scampered 85 yards for a touchdown and the Buffalo Bills have led all the way. They're up 7-3, to three, but the Dallas Cowboys have first and 10 on their 20. Gary Hogaboo, the quarterback, and Tony Dorsett finds a hole off the left side and slices through and gets a first down and more. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Steve Freeman made the tackle. Picked his spot really well to Tony Dorsett. Good blocking at the point of attack. Cosby, number 84. Freeman a double down. team. The defensive end, yards. number 91, Johnson. Create a hole, and uh, Marv, number 54, misses the tackle. He's finally knocked out of bounds by uh, Don Wilson. But he makes a nice gain in the play. Dorsett, 58 yards so far. First and 10 at the 31. Okaboom being chased by three white shirts. Completes to Timmy Newsom. Another first down. And the momentum brings him into Buffalo territory at the 49-yard line. Charles Romes and Rod Cush make the stop. Good for 20 yards. Watch the guards pull to the right. Look at they. One goes right. The other one goes left to protect for Hogaboom. And they throw back in the middle area to Timmy Newsom. Look at Timmy. Lower the shoulders and go right through the pile and come out the other end. Nice running on his part. He got about four extra yards with that good effort. First and ten for the Cowboys on the Buffalo 49. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Dorsett hit at the line and a good play by Chris Keating. Right now for an NFL Today report, here is Brent Musburger. Well, Dick, the Packers are on a roll and moving toward that Thanksgiving Day showdown here on CBS against the Detroit Lions. That is Eddie Lee Ivory's third touchdown. They're pounding the Rams 24 to 6. Let's go back to Dick. All right, Brent, and maybe that Central Division race, Hank, is going to turn into something after all. It could be because the Green Bay Packers are hot. Boy, they got the firepower to make, make things happen, and they've been doing that for the last three or four weeks. Well, the Bears better not start looking over their shoulder. They may find someone following. Second down and 11. Ogaboom's pass in a crowd but caught at the Buffalo 45 by Doug Cosby, the tight end. Gain of about four and a half on the play. Other scores around the league. Seattle having a terrific year, leading Cincinnati, Cleveland over Atlanta. The score that Brent just talked about, the Packers rolling it up on the Rams, and the Lions leading the Bears. And that Bears watching there in the fourth quarter in Soldier Field. Third down and seven. So if the Bills want to short circuit the Cowboys, this has got to be the down they do it on. Ogilvy pass, drop. Cosby was in first down territory and he was hit and could not hold on to the ball. They were blitzing on the play that time. Rones was coming. Marv was coming. They put good pressure on him, but he made, made him throw the ball, but still he threw it right on the money. It should have been caught. Steve Freeman defending. It'll be fourth down, and Danny White will kick. Wilson will go back for the Bills. Wilson fifth in the conference. In punt returns, and of course, Danny White. Been doing double duty when he's been a quarterback. Tough one to handle. Wilson calls a fair catch at the 18-yard line. Catch by Wilson. So exactly six minutes remain in the third quarter. The Bills will take over, and they still lead. It's Greg Bell's 85-yard touchdown run on the first play from scrimmage. The Bills have gained only 83 yards in total offense. They have a first and 10 on the 19. They'll lead 7-3, to three, depending on their defense today. Here's Greg Bell. Bell gets beyond the 20, where Andy White makes the tackle. Let's check some scores for you. New England right. leading Indianapolis. Score, Giants nine. Andre Giants. Waters, an 89-yard kickoff return for a touchdown to give the Eagles the lead, Hank. And they're playing good football. The Giants 9-7 over St. Louis in the fourth quarter. Haji Sheik, three field goals. And Detroit 14-13 in the fourth quarter. And look at Seattle still winning 17-6. Cincinnati in the third quarter. 
Second down and seven for Buffalo on the 22. Mark Kramer in motion. Draw play to Bell. Finds a hole and brings it up close to a first down. I'll make it to the 26-yard line. Brent Musburger with an NFL Today report. Dick, we got a development in Philadelphia, and the Redskins had just kicked a field goal. They kicked it off to Waters. He's the rookie from Cheney State. He found an alley and went the distance for an Eagle touchdown. 89 yards on the return, and the Eagles are ahead of the Washington Redskins. 16-10, back to Dick. All right, Brent. Well, we just told you about Waters' kickoff return, and then you had a chance to see it. One thing about the league, it's very predictable, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And if you believe that, we got a bridge, couple of bridges to sell people. Yeah. Third down and three at the 25-yard line. Ferguson has some time. Running away. Defender slips, and he overthrows Mark Bramer with Clint Scale covering on the play. Jeff Coat fell down, and now Ferguson is complaining to the official about something. It'll be fourth down and John Kidd coming up, coming in to punt. It's been a rough day for Ferguson. He really has not been on the mark, Henry. No, he really hasn't been. It looks like he's just a little bit uh, off timing, uh, trying to get rid of the ball, sometimes a little bit uh, sooner than he should, and sometimes he hangs on a little longer than he should. He's just in between. He's just not having a hot hand. So John Kidd will be in to punt once again. This will be his seventh kick. Strong remaining in the third quarter. The Dallas Cowboys in one of their better field positions of the game. They're at their own 41-yard line, first and 10. Buffalo's defense deserves a lot of credit. Dorsett finds a hole and gets around the corner. Midfield and into Buffalo territory at the 49-yard line. First down, Rod Cush making the tackle. That's a counterplay. Watch him step to the right. Step to the right. Watch the right tackle pull. Makes a beautiful block. Breaks to the outside. And he's finally knocked down there by Rod Cush. But a beautiful counter move and a good block by the right tackle, Brian Ballinger, Ballinger number 62. Buffalo territory at the 49. Easy for you to say. Hogeboom up the middle to Cosby. He's got it. First down inside the 30-yard line. Eugene Marr making the tackle. Good for 23 yards. Cosby has been a big target for the Cowboys. Tight end position on the right side, number 84. Watch Cosby come off the ball. Gets an inside release. Watch the linebacker, Marr, trying to cover him. Right between that ball was thrown just beautifully. Had it been thrown either way, inside or outside, it would have been a bad pass. But he threw it right on the money between the two linebackers. You can't cover them any better with linebackers than that. That may be his fifth catch of the ball game. And whatever it is, he has a club record for tight ends, which he established last year and breaks his own. Ogleboom on first and ten is sacked by Chris Keating. Second sack of the ball game by the Buffalo Bills. Interesting story about Chris Keating, Hank, because he had backed up inside backer and then moved outside for better run support. This is the thing that happens on a play-action fake. If you don't keep somebody in on the backside to block the linebacker in case he blitzes, they had somebody on him on Keating, but they missed the block, and that's the worst position in the world because the quarterback does not, doesn't, doesn't get a chance to uh, see the rusher. They're trying to hit Cosby on a down-and-out pattern. But he gets sacks in the meantime. Second down and 16. Loss of six. Back to the 32-yard line. Ogleboom to Dorsett. Ken Johnson has him from behind at the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and 14. So once again, the Buffalo Bills, who have not been a big play team on either side of the line of scrimmage, are coming up with some good ones on defense today. They really have. You talked about some big plays. They've come up with the big plays when they've had to. And uh, I hate to keep talking about this, Dick, but I still think they ran one counter play early in the drive which a good run by Dorsett but I still think a reverse or some other kind of a misdirection play would be very effective because boy Buffalo is really chasing. Don't you wish you had the phones up there to talk to the <laughs> sideline? Third down and 14. They're on the 30. Springs in motion out of the spread. Hogaboom looks 
in trouble. He can run, but he passes. Incomplete. Springs the intended receiver, and Don Wilson knocked it away for the Buffalo Bills. Hank, it looked like they had him. It was a close call, and Fred Smurlis put on a pretty good rush at the line of scrimmage. Well, you talk about the hound in the hair that time, chasing him around back there in the backfield. Here we go. Watch Hill, number 80, going downfield. Brian Carpenter covering on the play, number 30. Look at that. They're going to dance in a minute. <laughs> but they're cut. he's still covering him. He breaks downfield once he sees that Ogaboom is out of the pocket. But uh, pretty good coverage on the play. So Raphael set the in on fourth down. We'll try a 47-yard field goal. He's already made good from 21 yards to try to bring the Cowboys closer. The kick is up. The kick is no good. Off to the left. Well, Jeff the end misses a field goal, and the Buffalo Bills hold Hank once again. Boy, Buffalo was, was lucky that time. It looks like they had 12 men on the field. He finally got off just in time. Buffalo keeps the lead with 121 remaining in the third quarter. Out. Many times the fans have come to see the Bills and have been disappointed early and get distracted with other things, but they are very much in the ball game, and that's been a boost to the Bills. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. 121 remaining in the third quarter. 7-3 Buffalo. Chances for an upset become more real every time they hold the Cowboys. Ferguson swings it out to Booker Moore. And Moore gets a couple, and that's all. Everson Walls on the stop. They were 833 short of a sellout here at Rich Stadium, which, by the way, seats 80,290. There were some 5,000 no-shows. So that amounts to an attendance of 74,391. Well, the breaking the Cowboys game. record, Hank, they had 43 consecutive road sellouts before today, but this is pretty good. I'd give them a little asterisk on Listen, this. Listen, the Bills have <laughs> always been a great, great city for professional football, way back in the American Football League, back at the old Memorial Stadium. Always had great crowds. Second out and eight for Bill Ferguson. He doesn't like what he sees and will call a timeout. He is upset, too. A word to Denard. While we have a moment, we want to remind you of a big couple of days of college football coming up Friday. Boston College in Miami. Two of the more exciting quarterbacks in the game today. You talk about a hot game coming up. That should be a lot of fireworks. And people, the both teams Seven running up and down the field like a bag drill. Doug Flutie, the Heisman Trophy candidate. He's got to be number one right now. Although the people that support Keith Byers at Ohio State may say otherwise. Bernie Kosar of Miami. That's 2.30 Eastern on Friday. And then Saturday... Notre Dame, they must be sky high following their 44-7 stunner of Penn State against USC. Yeah, they're really coming on like gangbusters, and they can finish strong and wind up in a bowl game. But USC lost to UCLA, but the Trojans know that New Year's Day in Pasadena, they'll be at the Rose Bowl. That's next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern. Joe Ferguson, there you're looking at the passing yards today. Hank mentioned, as we both observed, just off the mark by enough to have an unfortunate statistical afternoon. And the only score for the Buffalo Bills was that 85-yard touchdown run on the first play of scrimmage by Greg Bell. Second down, eight at the 32. In motion is Mike Mosley. Pressure and a safety blitz by Michael Downs, and Ferguson never had a chance. Second time the Cowboys have gotten to Joe today. And he ran right into the, he ran right into the blitz. Watch 26, Michael Downs. Nobody blocked him, he got right through the gap and made the tackle on Ferguson. He had no chance whatsoever. Nobody picked him up, and that's what happens when you don't block a blitzer, you get a sack. Loss of seven. Third down and 15. That's how much time remains in the third quarter. Get another playoff. Ferguson is now 9 for 24. He was 9 for 29 last week. 
Boy, look at that middle. He's wide open. They can just get time enough to throw the ball inside. Ferguson looking down the middle, and the pass is caught by Byron Franklin, and a first down at the 45-yard line. 21-yard gain. Michael Downs and Victor Scott and Henry. He had the time, and he thread the needle on that one. That's been there all afternoon. Uh, the middle is wide open. They've got the seven defensive backs in the game, but the middle is open. Look at the time he's got. He steps and throws right on the money. They make the catch. Byron Franklin, number 85. And the key again, he had plenty of time to throw the ball, and they threw it in the right area, right in the middle. Look at the congestion trying to trying to get to the quarterback, Randy White. Just tangle up with a linebacker and get, doesn't get the penetration he should. Franklin has caught six passes for 55 yards. That's the end of the third quarter. Buffalo leads Dallas 7 to 3. Right now we pause for a word from your local station. Full in front of computers. Start of the fourth quarter, Nick Stockton and Hank Stram, the Buffalo Bills, who are 0 and 11 and have lost 13 straight games against the modern Dallas Cowboys, tied for first in the NFC East. Buffalo leads and has the ball first and 10 on their 45 yard line. Ferguson, who just read the needle, gets this to Booker Moore in the Dallas territory and close to a first down. Everson Walls making the tackle, and it appears to be another first down for the Buffalo Bills. This is a very high percentage kind of a pass. They hit the throw the ball outside to Booker Moore in the flat. He's wide open. Everson Walls finally comes up and makes the tackle and knocks him out of bounds but not until after he makes the necessary yardage for the first down. The Bills have outrushed the Cowboys. The Cowboys have gained more through the air than the Bills. Dallas has turned it over three times. Buffalo hasn't capitalized. And they've hung on to the 7-3 lead. First and 10 at the Dallas 42. Here's Bell on a quick opener is hit, but not before he picks up almost five yards on the play. And John Dutton makes the tackle. You know, that's very obvious, uh, as we talked about it earlier in the game, uh, Dick, that it's very obvious that you had a lot more success. The Bills have had a lot more success running right at the Cowboys, and especially to the left side, than they have any time when they try to run right or try to run sideways. And, of course, the fact that they're throwing the ball a little bit better also is going to help with the run. Greg Bell has now gained like 120 yards on 15 carries. And you know, Dallas will be impressed with the rookie from Notre Dame. Second down and six. And there he goes again. Greg Bell inside the 15. He's stopped at the 10-yard line by Ron Fellows. And he almost broke another touchdown. That's good for 29 yards. Watch Lockhart, number 56. He overruns the play. Look at 56. Then he comes back to try to make the tackle. He misses him with an arm tackle. Greg Bell goes right through another tackler, goes all the way down the field, and again, a play right up the middle, because if the middle, the linebacker moves either one way or the other, that middle is going to be open, and it's been very effective at another big play by the Buffalo Bills. So Greg Bell has established his top rushing output in his rookie year right here. He has 148 yards and 16 carries. First and 10 for Buffalo at the 11. Here's Bell slicing off left tackle and gets to the six yard line. Michael Downs making the tackle. The market at the seven. And Bell is open up in a hurry here. Here's a team that lost Joe Cribbs who could do everything and struggled, but they know that they have a very impressive rookie in Notre Dame's Greg Bell. I don't think he has the quick feet of uh, Joe Cribbs, but he's got great speed and has the capacity to make big plays. He's a straight line runner and can make adjustments, but he's got good speed and makes decisions quickly. He's not the receiver Cribbs as yet, but he shows he can move the pile a little bit. Second down and five. Bell inside to the four yard line. He'll mark it at the three. It'll be third and goal at the three-yard line. Ed Jones and Eugene Lockhart make the tackle. They're doing now. They're very patient, and they're just being uh, satisfied to slam the ball in their tough, to put a hat on everybody, and move the ball. Nothing fancy. Good old-fashioned football. Screw the hats on and go into the pile and come out the other end. And you know that offensive line has to be fired up. I'll tell you who's doing a good job. 
Will Grant is doing a good job as the offensive center. Ferguson the throw, swings it out to Bell, and Bell will go in for the touchdown. At this point, early here in the fourth quarter, it is 13 to 3 in favor of the Bills, 0 and 11 on the year. Chuck Nelson will try to add the 14th point with Matt Kopler holding. The kick is perfect. It's 14 to 3. Greg Bell has scored both Buffalo touchdowns, one on an 85-yard run on the first play from scrimmage, and right here as a pass receiver. Watch Bell coming out of the backfield, number 28. They go back in the pocket. The linebacker looks like he has coverage on the play, but he doesn't quite get out there, and he's wide open in the flat. They dump the ball off to him, touchdown, and they go ahead, 13-3. And Joe Ferguson has now completed his last four after a poor start. The Bills are cooking. They're back. Danny White loosening up on the sidelines. The Buffalo Bills striking on a big play. Greg Bell running 29 yards and ultimately Ferguson hitting Bell three yards out for the touchdown to make it 14 3. Especially teams have to do a job here to keep them good. Keep away from good field position. Talking about Buffalo. Allen at the five, returning the kick. Allen brings it out to the 32-yard line, making the 33. Brian Carpenter, Carpenter making the tackle. Well, Thursday on the special Thanksgiving Day edition of the NFL Today, former Packers stars Willie Davis and Max McGee will be featured. Both, of course, champions on the great Lombardi teams of the 60s. They've gone on to become successful businessmen. This story and much more. Thanksgiving Day at noon Eastern right here on CBS Sports. The big plays in that drive, besides Greg Bell's 29-yard run, was the pass to Byron Franklin, 21 yards, and Ferguson found the magic that he had lost for most of this game. First and 10 at the 33, Hogaboom looking. He's going to go deep. Tony Hill, penalty flagged down. And we may have some bumping and grinding upfield by Charles Rowe of the Bills. And it looks like pass interference will be the call against the Bills. Tony Hill to receive. Pass interference, number 26, defense. That's a way to get some yards back in a hurry. Here we see Rome's number 26 covering downfield. Right about the time they're even, he gets a shoulder. He wants it, you know, I, I think the basic rule is when you're even, you're leaving. And he was kind of, he tried to keep him from leaving that time. Got the shoulder involved, and that's why they call pass interference. So now the Cowboys will have it at the 39-yard line of Buffalo. 11 minutes, 31 seconds, plenty of time remaining. Hogaboom going for red throw out of bounds, incomplete. Hogaboom looked like he was destined to go to Renfro all the way on that play. Yeah, he made up his mind he was going to throw outside an outside pattern to Renfro. And uh, it looked like he hurt himself a little bit more than he should have. And as a result, threw a very poor pass. Hogaboom's numbers today. And Tom Landry on the Cowboys sideline. They know that the Washington Redskins, or you know, struggling against the Eagles who lead right now. Giants lead the Cardinals in that NFC East race, which has been tight all year, can get tighter. I think they can run the draw play here sometime soon. Oh, There's they the draw did. play, and it's stuffed by the Bills. Ron Springs is hit immediately and stopped in its tracks by UT Marr out of Saginaw Valley State in Michigan. There are many of the Bills who do not come from major colleges. 
How important would this game be to Kay Stevenson? That's, of course, a big topic. Anytime you're coaching a team that's 0-11, you know you're under the gun. Well, there's been a lot of speculation about Kay losing his job, and uh, a lot of people talking about that. And we talked to him, we talked to management, they all say that they're not going to make a decision until after the season and then be very uh, thorough about that. But they feel, I think they feel like they like to keep it. Third down and 14. Hogaboo with three wide receivers going deep and throwing out of bounds. Doug Donnelly, who has not been in much today, but he has been banged up with various ailments, was the intended receiver. Don Wilson and Rodney Bellinger, one of the dime backs that Kay Stevenson uses to fend. I think there again is another illustration of a big play team being a little bit impatient rather than being satisfied to move the chains We've got plenty of time to go down the field and get a touchdown. They're trying to get it all back on one play, and they can't go where they're playing defensively. Danny White will punt. Don Wilson is back, standing at the 10-yard line. And now, the Buffalo Bills have called a timeout, I believe, and they now have only one timeout remaining in this second half. Kind of unusual on this kind of formation, Hank. Well, I think they only had 10 men in the field, and that's why they called timeout. Then they made a very good decision. <laughs> and we know any time Danny White is back to punt is that he is still a quarterback and can always do some other things. That's always a possibility. I don't think they'll do anything here, but it's always a possibility if you're playing defense. You have to consider it, Dick. It's a good observation. John Wilson is back at the 10. But there is plenty of time. You pointed that out. 10.38 to go in the fourth. Good kick by White. Bounces at the one and goes in the end zone. Danny White has been terrific in punting and getting the ball inside the 20 all year. And his net average is amongst the best. In fact, is the best in the NFC. Well, tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes, followed by Murder, She Wrote, then the Jeffersons, followed by Alice, and finally Trapper John, M.D. That's the lineup tonight on CBS. Back in the last few weeks, the games we've covered, we saw the Cardinals lose to the Rams, maybe looking ahead to the Dallas Cowboys. Last week, the Giants losing to Tampa Bay, knowing they had the Cardinals this week. I don't know if the Cowboys are looking ahead, but they're not up to snuff in this one. It's a proven fact that uh, teams with bad records will always play much, much better against teams with good records. No question about it. First and 10 at the 20. Booker Moore for a couple. Booker Moore, Gary. The important thing now for Buffalo is not to make a mistake, not to reduce the size of the field for the Cowboys and provide them with an opportunity to go a short ways to get back into this game. On the other hand, the Cowboys have to do a great job defensively. They have to make something happen defensively, and they have to do something with their specialty teams to come up with a big play because they're not getting it done with their offense. Second down and nine at the 21 for the Bills. Meanwhile, the Giants have raised their lead over the Cardinals to 16 to seven. Bill Sims to Lionel Manuel with under six minutes to go in the fourth. They have under 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter here. Greg Bell is hit behind the line of scrimmage and Michael Downs makes a big play. Downs has to be having a Pro Bowl year, and it would be a shocker to everyone if he doesn't go to Honolulu. You know, Downs has a great illustration of how important it is for the offense to change the rhythm of the count. It looks like he's got the rhythm of the count, and uh, for that reason, the anticipation on his part was perfect, and he got right through the gap in good shape to make the play on the ball carrier bell. That's why it's important on the sideline to make sure that you tabulate when you go on certain counts so that you can change it. Tell the quarterback you've been going on two, you've been going on three, let's change it. There you see the two big scores concerning NFC East teams. Third down and 11. Ball at the 19 for Ferguson. Under pressure, his pass is caught by Rob Riddick. First down, Buffalo. And out of bounds, beyond the 30-yard line. Bill Bates making the stop. He's got a lot of speed, does Rob Riddick. And Everson Walls put some good pressure in on Ferguson. Yeah, look at Clinksdale, number 47, blitzing. Everson Wall comes from the outside, but they pick it up in good shape, and he got rid of the ball just in time to Riddick on the outside. Bates was covering man for man, didn't quite get it done, and they come out of the soup, so to speak, and have a first and 10. Big play at the 32-yard line with 8.57 showing on the clock, and Tom Landry 
shaking his head on the sideline. And Ferguson's getting better and better as he goes along. He had hit four in a row, including that big one to Franklin. Now it's five straight. Pitch to Bell. And you can see the Cowboys, Link Scale, going after the ball, trying to jar the ball loose from Bell, and he can't do it right there. And a good game by Greg Bell. Watch, watch Dexter Clinksdale, number 47, on the line of scrimmage. He comes up, gets penetration. Vogel tries to block him. But he's finally tackled from the inside, but they pick up a nice gain in the play. There's the clock. He's been keeping you apprised of the NFC Central race. Pressure on the Chicago Bears, but Bob Thomas kicked the field goal with two seconds to go, 19 yards out, to give the Bears a 16-14 win over the line. Second down and four. The ball is at the 38-yard line. Eight minutes and ten seconds in running. Here's Booker Moore going outside. Booker Moore he gets to the 42-yard line. Downs down, makes down, the down. tackle, and the clock stops with 8.04. Other scores, Henry. There it is. Chicago 16-14 over Detroit. Seattle 26, and Cincinnati 6. In the fourth quarter, 16, Cleveland winning 20 to 7 over Atlanta. The fourth quarter, and the Rams six, and the Green Bay Packers 24. And boy, they're hot. The Rams seven and four, same record as Dallas and Washington, and very much in the wild card race. Boy, Greg Bell last time in that last play made a great block on Fellows number 27. Beautiful block. So he can run. We saw him catch the touchdown pass, and of course the block on that play. Well, the wild card chase really could tighten up today. Here's Bell, head down. He's strong for his size, and he appears to have, and he does, the first down at the 43-yard line. Downs and Lockhart made the play. You know what I like about what the Buffalo Bills are doing? You know, they've had success running to the left. Look at Bell. 21 carries, 162 yards. Going into the game, he said, boy, I'd love to be able to carry the ball 25 times. He'll probably get that wish fulfilled here this afternoon. But the great thing about the Buffalo Bills really is the fact that they've been able to run left and they haven't deviated too much from that pattern. They continue to do what they've been able to do well. They don't stop themselves. They said, oh, all right, fine, we're going to keep running here. You stop us. If you don't stop us, we're going to keep running. And that's a great approach. And that's great credit to Ken Jones and Tim Vogler, who's had to go up against Randy White. Certainly right. The Bills have called their last time out with 7.14 to go. So the Bills won't have any timeouts left and actually won't need them if they hold their lead. And with 7.14 to go in the fourth quarter, Buffalo on the verge of a big upset. We'll be back. Richard Park, New York, outside of Buffalo. Dick Stockton and Hank Stram. It was a dream early in the ball game, but the Buffalo Bills, leading 14-3, to have used up their last timeout, and if they avoid mistakes, Hank Stram could pull off the biggest upset of the year. And that could really make their season and give them a little impetus for the remaining four games of the year. And really throw that NFC East and wild card derby into a tremendous drag bag. Bell is hit by Ed Jones behind the line, and Mike Hegman follows up on the play. Jones hasn't Thank had you. much of an opportunity to do very much this afternoon. They haven't given him much business. They've been doing all of their good work to the left side. Hank, can a team like the Bills get too conservative at this point, or is with seven minutes or actually under seven minutes to go, not so much the case? I think, you know, really, they've been conservative. Their whole approach was very conservative all afternoon. They, they decided they're going to run the football, and they've run it very efficiently. I think they're continuing to do that, maybe mix in a play-action pass or throw the ball uh, on occasion, but they're going to try to eat up as much time as they possibly can to keep the Cowboys' offense on the bench. Not take too many chances passing wise. No, no. Second down and 13, safety blitz, and here's Bell looking for a hole outside, and Bell down the sideline is still going. Greg Bell. Down to the 20-yard line, and a big play for the Buffalo Bills. Duck made the stop, and look at the Dallas Cowboys sideline. This is a team that is stunned by what the Bills, and in particular, the rookie Greg Bell, have inflicted upon them this afternoon. Great blocking on the part of Ken Jones and Tim Fogler on the yeah, left side, the left guard and the left tackle. Watch, they get a good block on, on, on Jeff Coat. And also, he runs down the left sideline. It looks like he was going to run out of bounds, but he doesn't. And he finally tackled on about the 20-yard line. A great run by Greg Bell. 
199 yards for Greg Bell. One touchdown rushing, another one receiving. Five and a half minutes remain. First and ten for the Bills at the Dallas 20. Here's Rob Riddick. And Riddick is hit behind the line by Michael Downs and a loss on the play of a two yards. They're going to have to separate him a little bit. I'll tell you one thing, Mike Michael Downs, number 26, is really having a great year. He's made some big plays here this afternoon, and uh, he made another big one right there on the blitz. Tom Landry told us last night, after he had his team meeting, he says the Dallas Cowboys are not going to just run over anyone anymore. Everyone's going to have to play a good game, and it's not the same as the old Dallas Cowboy clubs that many fans remember. And I think people in Dallas know that. I think it's very obvious, and they have to play just like everybody else has to play, like gangbusters, or else they're not going to win. They can't dominate people anymore, and they certainly haven't dominated this team. And, of course, you have to give the Bills a lot of credit. They talked about being tough and hard-nosed yesterday and that's exactly where they played here this afternoon second down and 12 453 showing on the clock here's bell breaks a tackle and gets back to the line of scrimmage maybe a yard gain eugene lockhart and john dutton make the tackle it'll be third down and 11 and the clock continues to run and michael downs that time was the one that came through and got the penetration and slowed the play down so he didn't have much of an opportunity to take yardage on the play on the outside. Third and 11. That says it all, doesn't it? That tells the story. Bell goes out of the ball game. Booker Moore is the long running back. Their field goal range to add to their lead. Byron Franklin goes in motion. Ferguson, who's been sharp lately, is going for Denard, and it's intercepted by Fellows in the end zone. So Ron Fellows on the interception, the second turnover of the ball game, and prevents the Bills from adding three points to their total and gives the Cowboys a light. That was really a bad play on the part of Ferguson's part. No way in the world he should, should have thrown that ball he had no chance in the world to make the in, make their completion. He rolled to get away from the pressure. He just threw the ball up on top. No place, no chance whatsoever. The receiver uh, was covered well by Ron Fellows, and of course they wind up making the interception. Or is it Fellows is the defensive back? Denard is behind him, but he throws the ball right to Fellows, and it's intercepted. Now Dallas has possession, first and ten. That's how much time remains in the fourth quarter. Kay Stevenson on the sidelines looking for the biggest win of his career, which he hopes continues. The deflection incomplete intended for the Dallas Cowboys' Tony Dorsett. It'll be second down and 10 at the 20. Keep in mind that the Buffalo Bills did not score. They threw the interception, but they used six and a half minutes of the clock on that drive. Yeah, that was the important thing. And even though Ferguson still made a very, very bad play by throwing the ball up for grabs in the end zone, he should have been thinking in terms of at least getting three points, three more points out of the, out of the drive. The Cowboys need two touchdowns to win this ball game. Pass caught by Tony Hill. He has a first down and is trapped at the 34-yard line. Good for 14 yards. Let's quickly check some scores. The Giants leading the Cardinals 16 to 10 with under two minutes, 150 remaining in the game at Giants Stadium. That's an important game. The winner is very much back in the race. The loser is really going to have to struggle. Look at this one, Philadelphia over Washington. Dallas and Washington both trailing in the fourth quarter. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. Hogaboom's pass caught by Cosby. Gets a few extra yards before stepping out of bounds in Bills territory at the 48. And 3.09 show on the clock. That was an 18-yard pickup. Keep in mind the Cowboys have all three of their timeouts remaining. Buffalo has used up its timeout allotment. But Dallas has to score two touchdowns. And Dallas has to go into their two-minute offense, I think, think too, uh, Dick. Uh, to take advantage of an opportunity to get the ball down the field. Penalty markers down. Hogaboom on first down. Incomplete, he was going for Cosby, who has caught six passes for nearly 100 yards today. Steve Freeman was defending the tight end well. 
you know, talking about being prophetic, before the season started, we did the first game of the year in Los Angeles, and I talked to Tex Schramm, and I, he said one thing that you can look for, I guarantee that Doug Cosby is going to have a great year. We're going to get the ball to him a lot more than we have in the past. motion, number 80, offense, penalty is Tony declined. Hill, decline, penalty on Hill. Here we see more scores. Seattle, 26, Cincinnati, 6. Cleveland, 23, Atlanta, 7 in the fourth quarter. The Rams, 6. Green Bay, look at that four to nine, four to nine, 31, six in the fourth quarter. But the Bears won their game, so they're not going to lose any ground today. Second and 10, at the Bills 48 with 3.04 showing on the clock. Hogaboom looking, going for Tony Hill, incomplete. Carpenter was covering on the play. It'll be third down and 10. And he had Jones wide open. Right on the numbers, had he made the catch, he'd have made a lot of yardage on the play, but he was bound and determined to throw the ball outside to Tony Hill, and he didn't have a chance. If the Giants hold on and beat the Cardinals, and if Dallas and Washington go on and lose, there'll be a three-way tie once again for first place in the NFC East, and the Rams on their way to a loss. A lot of seven and fives in the NFC. Pokerboom on third down. Hits his man. It's a fumble recovered by Buffalo. The pass was caught by Timmy Newsom and Rod Cush was right there. But let's see. They're going to bring it back. Eugene Marv made it. The hit. And I think they're going to call it incomplete. Apparently that's the call. No fumble. Remember now, the possession rule has to go into effect here. He has to catch the ball and have both feet down on the turf before it's a completed forward pass. It isn't, so he's got one down. That's close. close very yeah, close. Yeah, that's close is right. Looked like that other foot got down before yeah. he coughed the ball up. It did. It certainly did. I thought maybe it didn't, but looking at it on the replay, a great replay, it looks like it, it, looks like it might have been a bad call. It's fourth and ten, and the Cowboys have to go for it, trailing. 14 to 3, pass, knocked away, incomplete, and the Bills will take over on down. Charles Rome hitting Mike Renfro along with Rodney Bellinger, and the Bills have the ball. There again, Hogaboom went right back into the pocket looking for Renfro all the way. There was a lot double coverage on him, and in spite of that, he still tried to force the ball and had no chance whatsoever. The Dallas Cowboys have never lost to the Buffalo Bills. They've beaten them in the three times they played each other. As we said at the outset, Cowboys have never played in Rich Stadium. Last time they were here at the old War Memorial Stadium 13 years ago, and they came out in full force today, and the Bills are two minutes and 47 seconds away from a stunning upset. Buffalo looking for their first win of the year. Here's Greg Bell, over 200 yards on the day and into Dallas territory. And now the Cowboys call a timeout. They've got to stop the clock. Dallas with two timeouts remaining. We want to remind you, coming up, the traditional Thanksgiving Day game Thursday. It all starts with the NFL today at 12 o'clock Eastern. And then the traditional rivalry, the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. Green Bay, as Hank has mentioned, they're on a big roll, rolling it up against the Rams today. They'll join CBS Sports Thanksgiving Day, and of course, for the rest of the year. And of course, Hank Stram will be there at Pontiac, as he always is for CBS Radio. Don't eat too much turkey, Hank, on the morning of the game. You better save it for later. I won't have time. <laughs> well, 8 a.m. would be the right time for you to do that. Got to eat on the run. <laughs> Look at that. Look so, at that Buffalo 204, Dallas 79. And the thing is that Greg Bell has 202 yards rushing. The NFL's best single-game rushing performance this year, Eric Dickerson, 208 against the St. Louis Cardinals, and we were there for that effort. Second down and seven at the 49. Cowboys have two timeouts left. They're leaning this way, see if they run left again. They do. 
Here's Bell again. Bell breaks one tackle. They're going after the ball. The clock continues to run. 2.35 and running. They get to the 46-yard line of Dallas, and the Cowboys call another timeout, and they have one remaining. Yeah, they, they figure they have one remaining, but they'll still get the benefit of the two-minute warning, so they really have two timeouts left. The executive producer of NFL football on CBS is Terry O'Neill. The senior producer, Charles H. Milton III. Fine job by our men in the truck today. Producer John Paratsis and our director, Andy Kindle. Mike Albanese, our associate producer. Victor Frank, our broadcast associate. And everyone who did a fine job here at Rich Stadium for what looks to be the stunning upset of the year. And of course, as usual, our thanks to Marty Aronoff, our spotter, and Pat McGrath, our statistician. Hank, a couple of notes. The last runner to gain 200 yards or more against the Cowboys was Jim Brown back in 1963. Greg Bell did it today. Isn't that amazing? And the other point is that the last time the Cowboys were held to three points was five years ago against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So this is a monumental game in the Cowboy history, plus Buffalo. It really is. And, you know, watching the Dallas Cowboys offensively, it really looked like kind of a grab bag thing this afternoon, didn't it? Yep. They didn't really have any continuity, anything special that they could establish and hang their head on, and they continued to play that way all afternoon. Second, third down and four for the Bills with 2.31 to go. Here's Greg Bell, runs into his own man, and is down. Eugene Lockhart will get credit for the tackle. And the Dallas Cowboys have used their last time out. There's Tony Dorsett. Two minutes, 21 seconds to go. Dorsett has gained 70 yards today in 17 carries. You know, the one thing, Hank, and you can never marvel over it, no matter what teams have on paper, nothing can ever be analyzed as far as the mental preparedness and the psychological preparedness that teams have to have. Well, you have to, you have, to have that great intensity and that great fear of, of losing a game when you play some, anybody that you play. And I think if you're not careful mentally, you play a team that's 0-11, with a losing record, you think, well, by golly, we're finally going to play a team that we can beat easy, and we don't have to worry about it too much. And the next thing you know, the game's over, and they're scratching their head trying to figure out how they lost the game. But they didn't play with the same approach, the mental toughness, and that always creates a problem. There are 54 seconds left at Veteran Stadium where the Eagles lead the Redskins 16 to 10. Kid will punt fourth down. Cowboys were trying for the block, and a good kick. Allen will let it drop. It bounces at the five and goes into the end zone for a touchback. Kidd has been punting brilliantly all afternoon. That was a 45-yard kick. You know, the first time I've seen him kick, uh, he's fantastic. He's a terrific kicker. 2.13 on the clock. You're looking at the rookie from Northwestern. And with 2.13 to go, the Cowboys will bring it out to the 20-yard line. With one timeout remaining. Next Sunday, an NFL doubleheader, the Rams. On their way to a loss against Tampa Bay. Some of you will see the Eagles and the Cardinals. What about the Eagles? Huh? And Atlanta, Cincinnati. That's the first part of our NFL doubleheader. We'll tell you about the second. Two hot teams, Philadelphia and the Green Bay Packers, coming on strong late. Ogabu dumps it off to Dorsett, and he'll go out of bounds. He'll stop the clock with 2.05. And the second half of our doubleheader next Sunday on CBS. Most of you will see the 49ers against the New Orleans Saints or the Chicago Bears against the Minnesota Vikings. Check your local listings, and it all starts with the NFL today. Bell has gained 206 yards. He is two yards shy of Eric Dickerson's league high of this year. And Isn't that funny? We talk, he said, boy, I'd love to carry the ball 25 times. He's carried it 27. Anthony Dickerson on the Cowboy bench. Second down and four. Pass is incomplete. It's Rodney Bellinger. They like him very much. Made the hit on James Jones, 201. We have a final score from Giants Stadium, and the Giants defeated the St. Louis Cardinals 16 to 10. So the Giants are now seven and five on the year. 
The Redskins have the ball on the Eagles 43 with 41 seconds to go. A game in which the Eagles are upsetting the Redskins. Third down and four. 2-0-1 to go and they'll have the two-minute warning after this play. Ogaboom swings it out to Springs. Springs has a first down. Tough to bring him down. Megan Newsom. Timmy Newsom. How many times do we confuse Springs with Newsom? And it's a first down at the 40-yard line, a gain of 14. So we have our two-minute warning right now. Buffalo leading Dallas, and we'll be back for the conclusion. One minute and 50 seconds remaining here at Rich Stadium in Orchard Park, and the Buffalo Bills, barring in a miracle, will hold on. Of course, the Cowboys, with 150, can do a lot of damage. They've been going for the big play. It's 14 to three, and the Cowboys need two touchdowns. So they need a touchdown and an onside kick. First and 10, Hogaboom drills it up the middle. Incomplete, Eugene Marr going for the interception. Pass intended for Cosby. Second down. Cosby, the intended receiver. The Eagles upset the Redskins, 16 to 10. And when they say any given Sunday, today is the given Sunday. The Giants beat the St. Louis Cardinals 16 to 10. And if the Bills hold on and win this game, we will see a three-way tie in the NFC East with Dallas, Washington, and the Giants all at 7-5 and five, with the Cardinals one game behind and how about those, those Eagles? It's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> what a race. Amazing. Second down, 10. Hogaboo, penalty marker is down. Completes his pass. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line. That was Mike Renfro on the receiving end, 138 on the clock. Penalty is a legal procedure against Dallas. Greg Bell ran back, or I should say, ran the first play from scrimmage for a touchdown. Illegal motion, number 84, offense, still second down. Cosby, the guilty party, and the Buffalo Bills never trailed after the first play of the ball game. And I think it was a kind of a kind of a boost that they needed. It gave them an awful lot of confidence that they could do that in the very first play of the game. And they played a very inspired, very intense game all afternoon. They came in with nothing to lose. Victory over Dallas could make their season. It's not over yet. Second down and 15. Hogaboom looking for some room. And Ben Williams is going after him. And McNatty and Ken Johnson finally gets to him. Look at Joe Ferguson. Third sack of the ball game. And the Dallas fans. You think this is a big game for Joe Ferguson? Watch number 12. After the sack. He's glad to see some other quarterback getting the shot. He's had plenty of them all year long. <laughs> Boy, he sure He's has. glad to see somebody else get a shot. Third down and 22. And the pass is incomplete. With 1.17 to go, Newsom on the receiving end. It'll be fourth down and 22. Tom Landry is listening to his assistants, but I don't think his heart is in it. Well, he listened to Del Schaffner, I think, at the sideline, but he does look too enthusiastic about the information that he received, and it's understandably so with uh, 117 left in the game. You know, the tough thing about uh, the Dallas Cowboys, even when he rushed for 79 yards here this afternoon, and boy, you we'll only rushed that much Why against this kind of a team and this kind of a defense. The Bills came into the game with being 12th against the run, and yet they did not do a good job of running against them. Greg Bell gained 206. <laughs> Fourth down and 22. Hogaboom chase, Merlis. And Hogaboom drills it. And uh, Buffalo will take over, incomplete. Carpenter got a hand on it. It was intended for Renfro. And with a minute and 11, the Dallas fans, or I should say the Buffalo fans, 74,000 strong this afternoon, who came out to see a team they haven't seen in 13 years. Witnesses to the biggest upset of the 1984 NFL season. And that, <laughs> that's John, a record. John Farassis, our producer, says that this will be Buffalo's record. Yeah, that's right. There's one and 11 left. Left in the game, and that's a record. <laughs> nice going, John. You've done good there. <laughs> Buffalo first and 10. 
Cowboys will be playing Thanksgiving Day against the New England Patriots in their traditional game. But they're stunned over this one. Each club is out of timeout, so it's a matter of time now, under a minute to go. How do you think Jim Hazlitt and Fred Smurlis, some of the veterans that you talked to yesterday, feel? One win, but if the one win is against the Dallas Cowboys, it means everything. Uh, we touched on this before the game, and again, it was very, it was amazing to me to be in the locker room with those young players yesterday and see how enthusiastic the work they were about their team and about their potential and about their chances against the Dallas Cowboys. Spurless and uh, their outstanding leaders, Ben Williams and Ken Johnson and Hazlitt and all those people, uh, they felt strongly about the fact that they could play them tough. Let's listen to the crowd and soak in the final seconds of this game. So the playoff picture is really scrambled in the NFC. 